What is the crack, folks? Are we all keeping? We have another day in. We've not that many days left. So far, we are getting our old uh, airbrushing on. I'm using it as a method to bulk paint a lot of stone boys because boy Jesus, I've allowed to go through. So we have something like this, which is camo. Uh, and we'll end up with something roughly like this. I have to do the metallics on this guy, but sort of an urban camo gray gray with dark gray and black yeah and that's the that's the idea and then we'll park these boys on top of their plumes like so i'm sure jesus away you go you know there'll be no stopping us then huh huh i hope you are all keeping well we've another we've another stream because I have a lot of miniatures to paint and not a lot of time to do them all. As is my typical style. Lastminute.com when it comes to paint jobs. Now normally I don't bother with the airbrush. But I'm finding that it was super helpful. And getting a lot of miniatures because we've 30 stone boys to paint up so it's not like we're doing five or ten we're actually doing a good few because we've so many stone boys to do up the airbrush is just helping with um with base basing them base layers in fact by the time it took me to mask off uh these stone boys and we used Mr. Masking Soul, which is a Mr. Hobby product. Um, I would have been better off painting the camouflage patterns by hand, in all honesty. So, if you're not interested in airbrushes, don't be worried about what I'm doing now. I am literally just doing base coats. That's a, that is all that has happened. I've used it for... Um, I've used the airbrush to... I used the mask and putty for the camouflage patterns but in all honesty the amount of time it took me to sort out the camouflage patterns to my liking i would have been better off just painting them on by hand i would have been quicker and that's what it's all about now at the moment is just getting stuff done quickly because we've not got long to go monday monday is the day we're flying over to england on friday And we have a thousand point army to paint because none of the army is fully painted. Yay! I mean, if I wasn't walking, if I was off walk, you know, I'd be grand, but I'm traveling late on Friday, so there may be some painting required on Friday. Right now, a paint there. Maybe some paint required on Friday. Definitely Saturday, Sunday. I'll end up in my friend's place, and I can guarantee you there will be some frantic painting. We're doing 30 Storm Boys now. Hopefully, we get them done and dusted using up AK paints. So, literally, AK paint and then thinner for the airbrush. That's where we're thrown into it. That's what we're trying to get done. So, a few drops of the old light grey. Uh, because the base coat we did was a dark grey and then we masked off. But again, like I've said, I would I would do it by hand at this stage. I just, I'd get better control. I found with the Mr. The Mr. Hobby masking saw, or the masking stuff, that um, the brush is too big. For application on miniatures this size, it would be better for vehicles. So what I would I wasn't having to do was I deploy some to a bit of cardboard or my cutting mat or whatever, and um, I would then come in with a toothpick and then apply. Like okay, I'll see if there's an unpainted one here. I'd be applying it anywhere where you see that sort of turquoise sort of color. I was basically splodging it on 
um, and trying to splodge it on quickly because it dries pretty quick. But it's good. I reckon I do, I reckon this would be great for vehicles. So like if you're doing a battle wagon, um, it doesn't smell either. It's it's it doesn't stink, but it's a uh, it's actually pretty good. I reckon if I was doing the likes of um, a fighter bomber or a DACA jet or a battle wagon or any of the vehicles because the brush applicator I'll show you really quick because the old like that's the brush because the brush is so big it's just you have to splodge it somewhere else first and then come in with a toothpick so I was using a, a barbecue skewer that's what all my dudes are glued to I was using a barbecue skewer to pick it up and then apply it by hand and uh, at that stage, I would have been qu uh, quicker just would have been quicker just painting on the camo pattern myself because I'm used to mucking around with camo patterns or painting them up by hand because I'm so used to doing that. You know, we can I can get out a half decent pattern quick enough. So I think when it comes to the commandos, I've unit commandos to do up as well. When it comes to the commandos, I've done the base layer. I think I'll do the gray layer by hand and I'll do a slightly different pattern for them but we are trucking away folks again anyone who's joining and doesn't use an airbrush don't worry about it I'm just using it for base layers nothing too fancy I did use it for the gradient on the smoke plumes but like you could get this effect so with the smoke plumes, that gradient, that was all done by airbrush. So black forest, then grey, then coming in with red, then orange, then yellow, then white. But you could dry brush this effect on. I just used an airbrush because it was quicker. Because I have 30 of these. Like I have a whole I have a whole bunch load of them for all 30 storm boys, which all need to be painted up. Um, just using a clump foliage method and tipping away with it. So that's what we're up to. We are trying to get paint on our miniatures. In fact, you could probably nearly come in with a paintbrush at this stage and a paintbrush away. And it wouldn't be too much issue. You're going to get clogs and such, which isn't the end of the world. But again, it's base coating. Base coating them strong boys because they won't get themselves painted in time. So how is everybody else's week going? I think this is the second or third day of painting for myself. I have never painted this much ever in all of my years of hobbying and games workshop stuff. I have been assembling and painting and building for the best part of a week and a half now. makes for a pleasant change even though I had loads of time to get this all done and dusted as always with these types of projects I tend to leave at lastminute.com so that's what you're seeing now the uh, frantic painting of a desperate band <laughs> But we'll get there, I believe. I believe. I believe we'll get there. We'll get there. We will get there in the end. And we'll have a painted army. Because we are doing some battle reports with the other war bosses next week. We have organized an Airbnb. Got ourselves a big gaff in the middle of Ingerland. And that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing a league. So there'll be six of us. So we'll each get five games in with the current points, sadly, for the 40k orcs because we mistimed it by a week, which it's not the end of the world, but it's not brilliant either. And uh, that's what we're going to do. Get some games in, get some battle tech in as well. So we'll play a lot of 40k, we'll get some battle tech in. We'll play some Blood Bowl. I'm sure Clint will bring his, uh, his Blood Bowl bits and pieces with him. We'll play some Blood Bowl. We'll get a few different games in. A few different type of games. I think some of the guys are bringing uh, board games. So we'll get a bit of Hero Quest in. We'll get a few other bits and pieces. I'm currently just trying to clean out 
this nozzle, the blockage. This is the fun and games of owning an airbrush. If you don't like troubleshooting and fixing and trying to get stuff sorted, if you don't like fixing things, you're, you're not going to enjoy an airbrush, but it does tend to speed things up in general. Painting time. It is Malignus the Undying King. It is indeed painting time. No time like the present. Because we do not have long. By Christ, we do not have long. So what I'm thinking is, when it comes to painting these guys up, with the base layer of the camouflage done, I'm just going to come back in and I'm going to do that green by hand. Um, I was originally thinking of masking them off using some uh, masking tape and sorting it out that way but the amount of time it would take me to mask them up uh, tidily and then come back and then you know what I mean and then spray them and then take the tape off I'll just I'll just be better off painting by hand so it's it's deciding what what to airbrush and what not to airbrush there are certain tools that are better for certain situations you just need to kind of pick your battles with them you know what tool to use when, which is best suited for for which one. Uh, cotton buds are king when it comes to keeping your airbrush clean. You can't go wrong. But we'll get there in the end. What have we got left to paint after this? So we've 30 storm boys to do. We have 10 commandos. We have a load of commandos. Commandos, we've storm boys. We've loads of bits and pieces to keep us entertained. We have three death copters. We have a zang struct, which I can't find at the moment, so that's not boding too well. We do have five knobs in the list, so we've got a knob. Um, I think I put the wab on our knob uh, before it disappears altogether. So we've got the wab on our knob as well. In the list, we've got a unit like five knobs. We've got a Chinork Copter, which is a Legends unit. So we're not adverse to the idea of using Legends units in our games either. Because we've, you know, so many of us have been collecting orcs for years. Like, I've been collecting orcs for, Jesus, how long now? Um, 14 years? 16 years? Been collecting orcs for a good while. Since before the Assault and Black Reach came out, or Assault and Black Reach came out, I bought the Codex back in 4th edition, 40k. That's when I bought my Orcs. And I played a lot of 4th, 5th, 6th edition I didn't play too much of. Um, I wasn't too enamoured with the rules at the time. They weren't great, the whole characters and challenging and stuff. It was too, it was too warm or fantasy for my liking, you know what I mean? It wasn't the... Uh, it wasn't mass battles and you know that i'd expect in 40k people shooting each other mass combat that sort of thing it was all went a bit it went a bit down the road that warmer fantasy was like at the time so you know kind of magic phase and all this type of stuff and then character challenges and i was like ah so i didn't play too much of sixth edition seventh edition i played a lot of i was living in london at the time when i played seventh edition um, it was it was all right. I just I kept coming against my mates Eldar at the time, and they were just so powerful in the psychic phase. This was back when you basically generated magic dice in your psychic phase. So my friend, I think, with his Eldar army, was generating like sixteen dice back in seventh, because that how that's how it worked. It was like different items and stuff could give you uh, power dice, basically. And then I'd have two to try and defend. And you just couldn't. You just... The psychic... You just dominated the psychic phase. And buffed his units and debuffed. And it was just... A pain. So... Seven Dead was a bit crazy. Sci-Fi. Another stealth stream. Snaky. Of course. Copped it on pause. Ran out of rod to make rivets. Go to the hobby shop tomorrow. That's what I like to hear, man. That's what I like to hear. Good scratch bashing going. Bit of plastic hard work. I mean, I'd be very optimistic at this stage if I think we can get a... <laughs> if I think we can get a... A Chinork cop that built and painted before Monday. 
But you never know. We'll see how things go. Hopefully we get a good chunk of painting done tonight. I don't plan on staying up too late. Um, I'll probably keep the stream going until about 11 o'clock, I reckon. And see how it goes from there. But like I said, there's a lot to be painted. There's an awful lot to be painted. A fair chunk of stuff. And we are chipping away at our 30 stone boys, so... There we go. Once the base coat is done for all it is, I'm going to come back in. And like I said, because it would just be too much hassle to... It would be too much hassle to mask off half the miniatures and come back in again. It's just finding the practicality of what works. You know, what what techniques are going to work for you and your army. I mean, if I was painting Space Marines, I'd be laughing. Because you could do a lot of work with the airbrush. Get your base coats down. Maybe put in gradients. Uh, do pre shadings and a little highlighting. And then... You know, I just, I do it all by airbrush and then come back in and pick out the detail that you want done. So if you wanted the detail like behind, behind the knee pads, you know, any of the exposed sort of armored cabling, I, I do that all by brush then and just pick it all out and you'd be laughing. Like it depends on the army. Some armies will do really well with an airbrush, others probably wouldn't be so practical. I managed to get sliding doors on you. Oh, very nice. Did you manage to get sliding doors on your... Your Chinook build? How did you manage that in the end? Did you end up pinning the doors? Or, or what happened there? What was your... Methodology behind the mad build? Oh, there we go. See, because it's kind of a an off grey we're using, like white. They've got a. It's gonna your your tip is gonna clog up quite a lot in an airbrush. Gonna clog up an awful lot. Because the pigments are just bigger in whites. Whites and greys and stuff. But hey ho. Helps him get them done quicker. That's all that matters. If I was to paint these again, I would use a slightly darker light grey. I don't know if it's just me, but it seems that once you put it through an airbrush, it seems to be coming out a hell of a lot lighter. Or I mean, that might just be me, I don't know. But, um... Yeah, I'd, I'd, sw I'd switch out for maybe a slightly darker one. Now... In saying that, we still have to put a, you know, we have to try a wash on top. So taking that into account, that's going to tone it down a fair bit as well. You know what I mean? Butter's putting it on skewers and then tries to hold it with his hands. The irony. Boy, Jesus, the irony. So what's everyone else working on? Soy's working away in his chin or copter. What's everybody else painting? Getting a sneaky midweek painting session in, huh? This will be super handy, actually, using the airbrush and and doing mechs for Battletech. I reckon you could get quite a lot of them painted up in a very short uh, span of time. Wouldn't take too much effort. We are using Badger Patriot 105, if you're wondering. That is the airbrush we are using. Also got a chrome, but... This 105 is a workhorse. It's got a bigger bigger nozzle and a bigger needle, so I can get get a lot more paint out on the miniature. Which helps a fair bit. She's spitting. Needs more paint, so. But yeah, definitely, if you've not got an airbrush and you're, you're looking to use one, you need to, you need to be able to troubleshoot. So if you like fixing things, if you like figuring out why something isn't working and trying to 
eating rhubarb crumble and custard. You bastard. Hashtag jealous over here. Made a bracket and ran through some rod. So slides along top without blocking door. Not great, but works. Hey, look, if it, if it works, well, then it works, man. You know what I mean? If it does what it's supposed to do, then it's grand. Then jobs are good. This is probably a bit too watery now. Or a bit too thinned down. I think the terminology. Is that what the cool kids are saying? A little too thin down. Normally I don't airbrush this much. Um, I didn't. I couldn't even find. I have a compressor stored away somewhere. I couldn't even find it. I have these airbrushes years and years. Normally I just paint everything by hand. But because of the time constraint, I'm just... I thought it best to just crank out the old airbrush. And definitely for the flying stands, oh yeah. Pay dividends for the flying stands, but... I think for the rest of the miniature, it may not be the case. And the fact that this keeps clogging up on the tip as well. Tip keeps drying out, probably isn't helping. But we are using a double action airbrush. Did you find out how to make rhubarb wine? I did not find out how to make rhubarb wine. Sadly, my crop or patch of rhubarb plants got really badly damaged in the last storm that we had. I think it was Storm Kira or something, or Kieran. Literally the last storm that we had in there last week. I had only just bought some uh, rhubarb plants from my planter box. And they're all damaged, like, all of them. The storm just... Just the wind where they are, so I need to move the planter boxes. I need to move the old planter box into somewhere that's a bit more shaded from the wind. Because, yeah, I can't see the boils lasting long. I mean, we've got growth on the stalks, but they're little weedy stalks. But rhubarb wine would be interesting. Definitely want to do a rhubarb crumble. Homemade will be sweet. Can't go wrong with a rhubarb crumble and custard. It's the, you know, the traditional fields. Make it do the chores. If only. If only. Ooh. If I could make it do the chores, I'd be winning the battle. You get these storm boys to paint themselves. Those keen-eyed amongst you will realize that their sluggers all have silencers on them because, you know, storm boys screaming into battle on big noisy jetpacks using silencers. Sounds hilarious. Would you not agree? The ultimate in sneaky boy memes. But we'll be coming back in and doing the green boy hand, definitely. Could you bring some fresh when you visit DM, get your missus to make one for you? Ooh, the rhubarb. I don't know, are we allowed to import rhubarb into the UK? I'm sure you probably have restrictions in regards to the plant. Anyway, it's it's in season now. You know what I mean? You'd be able to get in Tesco's or Little or whatever. I'm sure. I'd be surprised if you couldn't. But I will not have time to make one the couple of days I'm in dims. Like I said, those last couple of days will be spent... Painting. Painting like there's no tomorrow. Overspraying a little bit. Control can be a bit hard when your nozzle keeps clogging up. Doodly doo. It's an affliction we also suffer with, gents. 
Orcs on jet powered roller skates. I have three plants till which the dog doesn't pee on. He'll be fine. <laughs> I mean, yeah, if you've got like a decent crop, give him a good wash. I uh, I commandeered some from my grandmother's garden the last time I visited her. And I literally had to wash the slugs off it, but that's fine. They just add to the flavor if you forget them, you know. I am going through airbrush cleaner like there is no tomorrow. Like before I started this, this was full. This was full, folks. I've been busy. But we have a thousand points because we have a 1000 point league. So we have a thousand points to get painted up. And not a lot of time left to do it. What are we, Tuesday? It's Tuesday today. <laughs> Army needs to be done by next Monday. Needs to be done. No if, buts, and maybes. Next Saturday, Sunday, full days of painting. Until then, we just have the evenings. Friday's a bit of a write-off, I reckon. Because I'm flying out to the UK. But next Saturday and Sunday, in my friend's place, we will be painting. Or I definitely will be painting. There is no other option. There are no choices left. There will be much painting. Essex has arrived. Get that paint on too, right, mate? Get that paint on as right. Spray him. I do like the camo patterns, and they look good when they're executed well, but the problem is... Ah, Jesus. The problem is this tip keeps bleeding, clogging. But if it was to do this again, you know, you could pick different camouflage patterns. But I just do it by hand. I just do base colours and then do it by hand. We have a load of stone boys just out of camera drawing. Um, and this Mr. Hobby stuff tends to work better. So if you put this on and then leave it on overnight, it tends to stick. It becomes a lot more resistant to being peeled off, if you get me. Whereas, when I did it on my test miniature, which is now buried under a load of stone boys, well, that was smart. When I was doing one of my test miniatures, Jesus, this is like a, it's like a game of Kerplunk now. Let's see if I can pull this guy out without, no, that's the wrong one. It's like a game of Kerplunk at the moment. We just have stone boys everywhere, off to the side, as you can see. When I was doing my test miniature, it, um, it was coming off pretty easily, like, straight away. It is like a game of Bleeding Kerplunk. Holy Jesus. Wrecking the gaff. Absolutely wrecking the gaff. But it's alright. These are, like, really weird lollipop sticks. Because <laughs> it's, like, stick with a storm boy in the end. So when I was doing this pattern, the camo pattern on this, it's like grey with black spots. Now, I came back in and did the black by hand. This guy's not finished. I need to do metals and stuff on him. But, you know, I'm just looking for a tabletop ready, sort of. When I was doing this guy, it came off really easily after I applied. So, you'd apply it, leave her for a couple of minutes, uh, wait for it to dry, and then do the spray, and then come back and just peel. And it would peel off pretty quickly. But the problem now is this stuff seems to have stuck a hell of a lot better to, to anything I've put it on. What are we cracking on about here? Found more slow gin at the parents that needs decanting. Lads might get two bottles. Holy Jesus, we won't be able to walk straight. Waiting outside my daughter's circus class to pick her up and then I'm back to paint myself. Ooh. Slow gin. Yes, it is. It is indeed adult Ribena. For those who don't know, it's basically like 
slow berries that are steeped in gin. You buy, you buy a liter of gin and you divide it up into two bottles. Film with slow, slow berries, and then you put a shed load of sugar in as well. Let it sit for a couple of weeks or a couple of months, rotate as needed, and hey ho, decant, and you've got yourself flavored gin. But boy, Jesus, you can drink it straight, honey. It's lovely. Now, if we look at this guy, you can see all these turquoise spots because they've dried, a, uh, they've dried through. So this is now a bit tougher to take off than if I had taken it off yesterday. So that's a lesson learned for using that stuff. But definitely, I would use it for vehicles more so than infantry in future. Because the applicator is just so, so big. The brush is just too, it's, it's too cumbersome for doing like camo pattern on the likes of these guys but it's safe for vehicles it's grand because the problem I was finding is, is it was drying out it dries out really quick actually which is good and it doesn't really smell so that's another good point to it but uh But yeah, don't leave it all. Don't leave it to dry too long, because it's a lot tougher to take off, is what I would say. <laughs> Adult dry bean mixed with rocky fuel. Oh Jesus, yeah, it is. It is indeed. But it's good stuff, man. The hangovers are rough. I'd say that much. The hangovers do tend to be. Pretty rough for it. But sure, what can you do? Mostly Zan has joined in the chat. What's the crack? Well, more like Erg at the moment. Why? Well, what's what put you Zan? What's wrong with you, Tom? Have you been drinking something you shouldn't have been drinking? Or you got a bit of a stomach bug? Or what's happening with you? Are you working on a hobby project? I'm hoping to have me Stone Boys finished by tomorrow night. I don't know, maybe tomorrow night's a bit optimistic, but we definitely want to get a lot of leg work put in. Get a lot of them painted up tonight. I do have half a cup of tea there, but I bet you it's gone tepid at this stage. Jesus. I'll have me trout to be drier than a nun's crotch by the time this stream's over from talking so much. Yep, over spray. Lovely. Lovely. Like I was saying, in hindsight, probably wouldn't have bothered at this stage to be doing their camo with the airbrush. I probably would have just done it by hand. Would have been so much quicker. Just do the base layer and then come back in. And because I've already sprayed them a dark grey, come back in with the light grey, and then you know I mean, like if I was doing the total camo pattern with airbrush, I would have started with black spots first. But there's no need. You know what I mean? Try and cut work out for yourself if you can. If you don't need to add extra steps, especially if speed is of the essence. Uh, try and decide what you can, what corners you can cut, what will work, what won't work, where you can save time. Just tired, 6 a.m. starts disagree with you. Oh, I'm dealing, I'm dealing like half seven starts and they're disagreeing with me, but then I'm finishing late as well. Well, not half seven starts, I'm getting up at half seven. 6 a.m. starts, yeah. They were my airport days. We used to, I remember back in the day when I worked in the airport, we used to have a shift that started at half four in the morning. It was four in the morning, I think it was four o'clock in the morning because the check-in for the first flight started at half four. Because it departed at like half six. And there was always a load of connections. So there was always a shed load of baggage as well. So it was always... It was a battle to get through. 
back in the day when Skarnir was a youth, you know, a good decade ago. But fun times and fun memories. The night shifts as well, walking night shifts, oh Jesus, walking night shifts. That was a pain. Oh, man overboard. I suppose it's a good thing about airbrushing as well as they tend to dry pretty quick. I did manage to paint some of my squid catapult again earlier though. Way nice. I get a good sleep then I'll be okay. Ah yeah, recharge the old batteries. It's nothing like a good sleep. Especially when you get older. You tend to get boring and appreciate those sorts of things. It's like a good, 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 solid eight hours kip. Jesus. Worth its weight in gold, my friend. Don't know what to do with yourself. Night shits in the hospital used to be hard. Watching teenagers make sure they didn't self-harm back then. Jesus. Yeah, I'd say that. That sounds like fun. So any of your hospital staff doing night shifts at all is... It's not great crack. Dealing with drunkards. Would not be fun at all. When jail apparently the younger generations come up, don't drink as much as older generations. I drink the odd time myself, but uh they wouldn't catch me in the bar that often. On a rare occasion. Maybe if it was somebody's birthday or something. Or a family function, but uh what it was no. Too expensive. Especially in Ireland. Holy Jesus, the price of a point these days. These guys are all just looking to bail on me and fall over. Yep. That's just they're just crucifying me now, guys. They're just killing me. We are running out of space. There are storm boys everywhere. Everywhere. Not doing that in a long time now, no. Don't know how Norses, etc. deal now. Oh, I don't, don't know. Fair play to them, like. Troopers. Absolute troopers. Don't know how they manage it themselves. But we are suffering with an L droid tip here, and it's not helping us. Wait, wait. We're nearly done. We've seven more to do. Six. Seven. I just found another one. Hey, look at this sneaky hero over here. Uh, seven more to the base coat. Then we will peel the uh, the masking putty off of them. And then I'm going to come back in by hand. And apply the sort of black patches. And then so many quarter past nine, so we're doing all right, actually, time wise. Like I said, we'll go for another hour or so. The airbrush has helped speed some things up, but again, you need to pick your battles. You need to decide what am I masking off? What can I get the bulk of? Thankfully, the uniform on these Stone Boys is the bulk of the miniature. It's between that and the rocket packs, but I'll come back in and I'll paint the rocket packs by hand. Because otherwise the masking, it would just... The amount of time it would take me to mask off up and around what I've already done, it would just it would just be too much hassle, man. You'd have to pick out the shoulder pads. You'd have to try and get the collar covered. You know what I mean? And all that prep work. Especially when I know I don't have much time. Maybe if I had more time, I'd do more sort of exotic patterns with them and take me time a bit more. But I'm just looking for... Just a bog standard camo pattern, nothing too fancy. Something that'll look a bit cool. And I want them to have that mismatched kind of look. So the green on their backpacks. Which is Castellan green. Which is like a kind of like a US olive drab. Oh. Here we go, you can tell the tip's drying up again. 
Deason's here. Wait, what's the crack? Wow, Deason. What is happening, man? You're seeing me being more productive with my orcs than I have any business doing. But now that I have the airbrush set up and sorted, I can attack some of my mechs. I could do you could do whole like companies no bother man. Especially camo patterns for mechs. I bought um I bought different masking sheets, so masking sheets where you can cut them out by hand, draw draw the pattern and cut it out. I bought some of them. Cause I was hoping to try and sort some of that out. But uh to no avail at the moment anyway. Can I get you to sit in this? There you go, you can go sit there. I'm literally playing a game of Kerpunk with all these storm boys off to the side. Whoop. But once we get all this uniform layer done, we'll come back in with a paintbrush. Try not over spray too much. But this tip keeps drying out or clogging up on us, so it's been a bit of a pain in the ass. And that's because it's such a a light colour, like an off white. This grey. Ah Jesus. Man overboard. The packaging material that my compressor came in is like one end is like a block of polystyrene. And I've been using it as a drawing block, kind of, to poke. These kebab skewers in. And hopefully get them to dry without uh, smudging them too much. But because there's, there's, there's just there's so many of them, man. I just can't afford to be too precious. I mean, they're not cheap. They're about, what, 30 quid for five? And I've toured them here. You know, so. A fair few. A fair few. Name of the game right now is try not to overspray. So with a double action airbrush where when you push down on the trigger, that's the air. When you pull back, that moves the needle. And that controls the amount of paint coming out. Because the needle sits in a nozzle. The air goes up and goes past this well, so this is gravity fed, this one. If it was from the bottom, it would be siphon fed. So as it goes past, picks up the paint. Here, actually. So the air comes through, and then it'll go over the needle. So this just slowly, f constantly fades. And it gets pulled out that way. And hey-ho. That's how she works. If you're doing vehicles, 100%. I have... I've had a stomper since they originally came out. And I primed it black. And then that's it. I never touched it after that. Now... I bought some... Digital camo patterns... Years ago. And now that I actually have the airbrush up and running. I reckon it would pay dividends for myself just even doing bare layers. Now you can do like super technical stuff. You could do like zenithal highlighting and all that type of stuff. But that's just... I don't, I don't have time for that. I really don't have time for that. This is just... Get the base layers on. Come on now, stop being an ass. Whoop. I 
I even have like an extraction boot and stuff, but I just can't fit it onto this desk. I have another desk there and it's just, it's just been so much more convenient just for me to get spraying as soon as possible. Right, that's that base layer done. We're going to stop with the airbrush for now. We don't need any more. That is that layer and the storm boy is done. This is over there. Over their camo. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clean this out. Also, quick release is awesome. Get yourself a quick release connection. Makes life super easy. And if you are thinking about getting an airbrush, you need to clean it all the time. When you're finished using it, when you're thinking about changing color. And we have one of these little sort of pots for over spraying into. So you put your cleaner in. It sprays in. This is basically like a glass jar. There's a glass jar and then there's a plastic shield in here for it to deflect off of. And then this is just, there's a filter here. It's like a cotton filter. Do I have one spare there that I could show you outside of it? Yeah, there we go. Look. It's all these little filters. They go in there. Because as you spray it, you're just trying to clean it. You'll see the you saw the mist there the mist will come up kind of here but it picks up all the particulates and you're just trying to clean the well out so if you have a little brush that you don't really care about like one here just try and clean the well out but keep it give it a deep clean as well if you if you have an airbrush and you're finished using it for the session give it a deep clean i'd take it apart a bit to take the nozzle out and clean the needle and you know We've little wire brushes here for giving it a deeper clean, but I mean, don't worry about it too much for now. I'll clean that more off screen. I'm just sort of getting the bulk of the paint out so that I don't have to, uh, I don't have to worry about trying to beat the thing into submission when I come to clean it after the stream. But that's that for now. We shall leave our airbrush and now we shall attack by hand. Ha ha! Like the peasants we are. So that's out of the way now. So let's crack on. I paint by hand. Right, so let's see. Is there any of these boyos dry? And then I'm going to see what the story is with this mask and putty. How easy is it to take it off? Now, I did have tweezers. And there's a blade knocking around there. I do not want to stop myself on the leg. So trying to get this back off. That compressor. That compressor can stay off now. We don't need it to kick in. Thank you very much. Okay, so it comes off quick enough. As you can see, we've masked in various points. And it's just to try and get little patterns. So it comes off easy enough. That's not too bad. That's good. I don't mind that. Can we get it off by hand? Yeah, you can get it off by hand. It actually comes off pretty easy. I was worried there for a bit that it was going to be problematic to try and get off because it's a it's like a rubberized sort of gum it's this stuff comes off like super easy when it's uh not fully dry but even when it's dried a fair bit it seems to come off quick enough so this is what we were trying to do we were trying to get a camouflage pattern going by masking it but like I said speed wise on miniatures this size you'd just be so much better off just doing it by hand man you know what I mean I would have just been better off doing these grey patches by hand because now I have to come back and just take them off find each individual one take it off whereas if I just did the initial pass by brush just would have been one and done you know what I mean uh, if I was to go back, yeah, you know, I do. I do the lighter. I do the main color. I do the main color, and then I come back, and I would just hand paint in the patches. And if I scuff a miniature, I'm not too worried because, like I said, I'm coming back in. I'll let this one dry a bit more. He is not got. He's not dried off sufficiently was still a bit soft it's gonna get an airbrush this year but we're gonna focus on getting better at painting this year and we'll get an airbrush next year i think um yeah it's like it's the same thing it's always 
I know some people are like, oh, you know, airbrush. Oh, it's so much better than painting or whatever, you know what I mean? Or There's always a this or that mentality, you know what I mean? Like, why, why paint with... Why paint with brush when you can airbrush or whatever, you know what I mean? There's people who are divided in regards to camps for which is better or whatever. And it's like, it's just it's just another tool in the box in my eyes. Like, you're going to use it for some things and it's going to be great for it. And then there's still parts that you're going to be wanting to use your paintbrush for. Like, coming back in here and picking off the details. So, like, all of the, all the straps... All the harness that's holding on to the jetpack. That all needs to be done in... I think it's dryad bark, is it? That what it is? It's like a dark brown. I mean... Realistically, yeah, you could sit there and... You could... Mask off the rest of the miniature and spray it up. But sure, that's not practical. So why, you know... Know when to use the right tool at the right time. If you get me. That would help massively. So it's another tool in the box and it helps us get a little base cuts going really quick. And we are just picking all of these off. So if I can get the uniforms done tonight, we'd be doing well. We might even get to the stage where... Where we might start on the backpacks then. So the jetpacks... If we can get that box off, we'd be flying. Because then there's not much left to do on them. Um, try to even think of the object source lighting. So the OSL for... I'm trying to think of how to do that without ruining the miniatures. Because we're going to paint them up and do them up in their... Their uniform colours. Um, in order to get that sort of glow effect off the back of the backpack. So... Because we've got our smoke plumes already and we have those colours picked out. What, we, what I want to do is I want to transfer some of that glow to the back of them. If you get me, so like on the legs and on the backpack and stuff. But without affecting too much of the miniature. So I might think I think I might just dry brush that effect in. That might be the best course of action there. Yeah, I seem to have missed a large patch of this guy. But this is, this is the problem we're going to suffer with. Doing them in bulk, sometimes you're going to miss detail that you would otherwise not miss because you're doing it in bulk. I'm sure there's going to be one or two guys that when I come back to paint, I'll notice that I've, uh, I didn't pick the, the masking putty off of. It's all right if it flakes a little bit or, you know, it's, it's patchy in places with another, we have another colour for the pattern to come up. We're going to use uh, Vallejo Surface Primer Black. So we'll do the black patches there. And they will end up like this guy. Looks a bit weird at the moment. But once the straps are painted in. And the backpack. It looks half decent. Because we've got our painted dude. Over there. Even he's not fully finished. But you see what I mean? Once you've got like the straps painted in. And you need to pick out the color and the frills and stuff like that. We're going to be putting a black wash on it. Um, in fact, you know what? We'll try that now. We'll try the black wash now just for a, a visual of what we would like. We'll use some Vallejo Model Wash Black. I have several tubs of it. I use the green as well. That will be going on top. But just, just to tone back the uniform, I just want to see what it's going to be like. So we're... Black and Vallejo model wash black. We've got our little our BB shot tub. We'll use that. That's way too much for the time being, but hey ho, it's not the end of the world. Change your paint water. I have a paint well, which is super handy. One of the weirder boys that I've gotten for the hobby, but I find it's actually like super helpful. So, just want to attack his uniform. Not too much, just tone it down. That's too much. So, wick it off. That's too much. But 
but it definitely helps with toning it down. I was worried there that it was a bit too bright, if I'm being honest, but once you put a wash on it, it'll tone it down a bit. And this is the problem you have with camouflage patterns as well. You don't want to wash out the pattern you've bothered to put in, if you get me. So like because there's black there and there's the dark grey because we're making the whole thing a bit darker on the old grey front. You don't want that dark grey to be grown either. But in the meantime, toning down this light grey will help it look way better. The wash will also help distinguish what needs to be sort of picked out. That we've missed or maybe we've oversprayed or... You know, so I painted up the straps on this guy already, but I can see that I've missed the upper straps, the upper part of his harness. That needs a bit of dark brown, but you know, all in all, does it really matter for the likes of this? I think that's grand. That's toned that down nicely. That looks uh, that looks better. I don't know if it's coming across on the camera, but I am very happy with that. So only 29 more to go. Way. Keith Gross is here. What's the crack, Keith? What's the story? He's just home. How are you, bud? We are currently taking masking putty off of our storm boys, is what we're up to, Keith. We are keeping ourselves busy, busy, busy. In fact, I might as well throw a bit of wash onto this guy. So they'll be on the same stage as him, and we'll just. Throw a wash on them. Try and get all the other bubbles out. And the fact that the straps aren't painted yet. So, like, if you decide to paint your middle from the inside out. So, like, the uniform is the innermost layer here. So, we'd want to get the uniform done first. So, because any mess that we have or any slop. Like, now, I, I can just throw this wash on and not care about getting on, on other parts of the miniature. So, if we tr paint from the inside out, we can be... You know, a bit more liberal with our applications because at the later stages, as we get to the later stages, we'll be tidying up the miniature. So when I come to paint up the straps, any of the stuff that's overflowed onto the straps, it will get tidied up. And there you go. So we'll get to that stage. But that's uh, we're jumping ahead of ourselves because we have to get the masking putty off. And then we'll do the black camo. So, if we get the mask and putty off tonight and the black camo, we will be laughing, is what we'll be. I'll take more effort than I'm willing to expend at the moment to make the door gunner how I picture in my head. 29 to go, two minutes each, you'll be done in an hour. Ah, uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But batch painting, batch painting is, yeah. If you do like one test model, and figure out how to get something painted. You'll be flying, man. You'll really be flying. You just get quicker with your technique as well. Like That's the part that slows me down, is the initial sort of planning, deciding what way to paint things. But once I get the methodology down, like I need to paint this first, and then followed by this paint, and then that paint. Once I get that down, I do be grand. There goes my phone. Once I get that done and dusted, sorry, I'll put that on silent. Once I get the te the technique down, like when to paint, which paint, in what layers, what washes, what can be airbrushed to speed the process up, and what stages can be done later so that any overspill is tidied up in succession. Once that's done, sure, Jesus, that's half the bleeding battle. Like, that's just planning out your paint scheme. Does anybody else bother that, doing that? I know for the Force miniature, it takes a... The Force miniature it takes me longer than any of the, the later miniatures to sort out. In regards to, like, when I'm going to paint it. What, what way to apply the layers and such. How do the rest of you approach it? Do you do the same? Does anybody else really bother batch painting or am I just nuts because it's like last minute for me? 
but it needs to be done. But if we're doing them in two minutes each, <laughs> I don't think it's going to be two minutes, so I think it's going to be more than that. But I'll go through them in stages. They won't be pretty in the end. Well, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm my own worst critic. I tend to be. I think most creatives are like that. People who are, you know, artsy in one way or another tend to be our own worst critics. Um, but they'll be a good tabletop standard. My mates tell me that I do like better than tabletop, but I, I don't know. I think, I think they'll be a decent tabletop standard. Is what that's what I'm. If I get that and they look good in a battle report, sure, Jesus, that's a win in my eyes. You know what I mean? But yeah, definitely mask and putty. Great concept, but time-wise, just too much. Too much for for storm boys for the time I have available. It just takes too long. You just have to find a different approach so when i come to my commandos i'm just gonna i'm just gonna paint the commandos like i've done a gray base layer on some of them but on just any patterns like that i'm just gonna paint them by hand it's just it's just gonna be so much quicker and i'll do a bit of variation in the patterns as well so they're slightly different if you get what i'm saying so that they don't all look the same mind you most of these thorn boys are gonna look very similar but they're blood axes you know uniforms blood axes Stone boys are supposed to be like super regimental, so it would make sense that they would all look very similar. Whereas the knobs from units, I tend to paint up different camos. So usually, if I'm painting like a boys' unit, I'll I'll pick sort of two camo colors or two camo patterns and go with that, and then. Ver do variation on it so I'll be like okay one boy I'd paint up his pants one way maybe in like a US olive drab or whatever and then the next guy I do a short and an olive drab you know and then Zandri dust that's another colour I use a lot of that's him done so it's just picking picking colours and going with it Zena saying I can batch paint three or five grots or boys at the same time, but not more than that. I actually found it like when I was painting me grots, I actually found grots super easy to paint. Because once you get the skin done on the grots, that's literally like 90% of the model easily. Easily 90% of the model. I was so surprised when I was painting. Because I think I did like 120 of them or something like that. I painted a load of them. Because I was bringing mobs at 30, so I think it was like th four, four mobs at 30. I think it's, I think I did 120. Either 120 or 90. And I painted them all up as Rebel Grots. And I love the paint job, man. I took my time with them. Which is hilarious, especially for a unit that, like, has no stick and power on the tabletop. They look cool. I have one to hand here. Hold on, as soon as I finish taking the mask and put it off of this guy, I'll grab. I shall grab one. But yeah, this is sticking a little bit more than when it's freshly applied. But the grots, I did like grot rebel stars on some of them. And once you once you've got the skin painted up, like it's nothing special, but you know it looks nice. You know what I mean? Given that I start one mini, then get bored and start another, I now have a hundred and a half finished minutes. I'm technically batch painting everything, but very slowly. All at yeah, I get you. You're like, I'm base coating everything. Yeah, it'll just take me a while. But you'll get there, Tom. You'll get there. Like the L Gargant. You'll get there. I think you're better off using a wood or plastic implement to get this off. Because you're risking damaging the paint job, I think, with a metal tweezers. I think that's most of what we want. So that's that one done. Down to the next one. Did it? Did oh no! We forgot one. <laughs> There's always one. Isn't that always the way? There's always one. Look, that's not the end of the world, Will. 
We'll save him for last. So I'm just we're on a roll now. There's no point in going back to the airbrush and trying to go back and do that there. There is no point. We are taking the putty off. That is what's happening. Yeah, so there's the putty's a little tougher to take off if you leave it to dry overnight. So if you're using it, just let it dry for ten minutes or whatever. Do your masking and then I would suggest taking it off then. It's a yeah, because it's it's a bit more it's dried, so it's kind of springy, if you get me. Whereas when it's newly applied, it it's not it's not as gelatinous kind of. Whereas now it's kind of elasticated. So there's a bit of bounce in it. That one? No, that's not one. But that's not the end of the war leader. We can just paint the black patch over that. Like I said, we still have another colour to go, so any any mistakes we make and um, we can easily tidy up. So there's one there, look. Boop. Just make sure all areas of them are cleared. He's cleared. On to the next one. Do do do. Tom said, I mostly use contrast paints now except for metal. So if I paint a batch of three, by the time number three is painted, the paint on number one is dry. I mean, that's smart thinking as well. Um, I used to do smaller batches as well at some stage. I'd, back when I did uh, night shifts, I'd take five orc boys in and I'd just... I'd go through the base coats, do the camo on them and just go through the five of them. You know what I mean? Whereas if I took a larger batch in, if I do a larger batch of miniatures... I tend not to get as much detail done, if you get me. Sadly, I didn't capitalize on that night job when I had the chance. You'd think I'd have a massively painted army, but I don't. I do not. I didn't. Did not capitalize on it. Ah, well, onwards and upwards. I would not do night shifts again, mind you. Boy, Jesus, that was rough. Roof. But we're getting there. But yeah, three at a time. I can understand three at a time. I think having your painting cycle be... Oh, Jesus. Having your painting cycle be, hey, the next stage, I'm getting to the next stage when the force guy is dry. That sounds, that sounds like a good way to logistically sort of plan it. You'll get through your phases or stages of painting pretty quickly that way. There's another one there, look. Boop. You got through the ML painting stages quick enough. I get the feeling we're going to miss putty on some of these guys. It's only inevitable, to be honest with you. So, if I say, the Grotz used to be the channel back banner, didn't they? Um, did they? I think they did. Used to, yeah, they used to be the back banner. Yeah, yeah, I've loaded them. Um, I've still got, like, some Gorka Morka ones. So, I've got, like, the swanky ones, like the Red Gobbo and the Banner Waver and the Head Honcho and stuff um, that I wanted to paint up because... I figured my blood axes would have rebel grots as their grots, you know, little mercenary grots that they've hired out or bribed. Yeah, and I just like rebel grots because then you can know uh, they double up then because if you want to play Gork if I want to play Gork and Morka, I literally just have to take my grots and paint names on their bases and hey how instant mob. You know what I mean? So it's it's getting the most out of your miniatures at the same time. I like the look of them. I like the color scheme, but also getting the most out of them. So double use. Gork, Morka, and 40k. Crafty like that. Yeah, you have to be crafty like that. I used to like that a bit of Warhammer Fantasy back in the day when... Before Demons of Chaos were their own sort of codex, you could... Look at this. This one's stuck. 
Before I did Raider Yard, their own codex. You could have them in Mortal Realms. You could have them in the Mortal Realms codex, and you could have them in the Beasts of Chaos codex. So you could have, like, demons in... You could do, like, a whole demon army. You could do... Beastmen, and you could have demons in there, or you could do mortals, and you could have demons in there. And I used to think that was cool, but then they sort of split demons off to do be their own thing, which was a bit pants, you know, because that was the fun of it, is you could chop and change between those books, you could interchange, you could have Beastmen in the Mortal Realms armies. Yeah, you could you could do fun stuff like you could have the beastman being led by a demon prince, and you could have mortal units and stuff. Chaos warbands, tons of fun. I didn't play orcs back then though. I just I thought the rules, the army rules were just terrible. I've never been a fan of any army wide rule where the army does damage to itself, you know, because it's like. Oh, we failed the morale test or whatever, or animosity test. We're going to do damage to ourselves. I just, in lore, that never made sense to me. It's like, oh, the orcs in fight. It's like, yes, the orcs in fight when there's nobody else around. The orcs don't in fight when they're on the battlefield facing down their opponents because they have their opponents in front of them. You know what I mean? Like, those sort of rules have just, they have always annoyed me. Or they've done it on the Tyranids as well a few times. Where they, you know, they'll be out of the hive mind rage. And, you know, they damage themselves on certain roles. Which, and I was like, well, that makes no sense either. They're all the same sort of creatures, you know what I mean? They'd either fight or hide. They're not going to attack themselves. A herd of the same sort of need. You know what I mean? It's just just not fun in my eyes. The, when, when a gaming system, when you're fighting against the gaming system and, as, and your opponent, it's uh, I've never seen it. There's a lack of sort of player agency. You know what I mean? Randomness is fun. Like, you know, shooting yourself across the table. But not from like a, a game mechanic, like a psychology mechanic or something. Or never being a, never being a fan of that. Would a soft toothbrush take that stuff off easier and quicker? Uh, look, but it, you know, at this stage we're nearly through them, so the time to go down and get a soft toothbrush. And I don't think so. I think it would actually probably potentially do a bit of damage to the paint job because some of them aren't coming off that easy. Like I said, if you're dealing using this mask and putty, it's really good. It doesn't stink. It's really useful. Uh, but, um... I missed this guy's knee. Yay. How did we manage that? How did we miss his leg? Oh, whatever. That's the colour it is now. I care not a jot. Yeah, I won't notice when we put the black wash on it. Yeah, no, I can't see a soft toothbrush getting uh, getting this off easy. Now, if you were doing it when you first put it on, I think so. I think these would come off. These would come off easy enough. Look at the hassle I'm having trying to pick them out. But yeah, I don't think I'll be using Mr. Mask and Putty again for infantry. Vehicles, yes. Infantry, no. Definitely use on vehicles. Great on a stomper. I reckon you'd get some cool patterns on a stomper with them. And then just use the brush applicator that it comes with. Because it's kind of like... There's like tubs of glue, I remember, as a kid, that had these sort of brush applicators. It reminds me of that. I don't know what type of glue it was, but it felt smelled really bad. Like fish. Like rotten fish. Be like a white glue. Um be like in a white white bottle, like white square bottle with a an orange lid. I remember the art stores they had it. I have no idea what, what glue it is. 
but I just remember it stinking terribly. But it's very gummy. Kind of like what this one is. <laughs> yeah, cheeky. He's hiding. Keep. Yeah, I get you. Promoted the stub. Sub knob for being stealthy. Or maybe, you know, sub boss for being super stealthy. He's a, he's a sneaky stone boy. You know? That that in and of itself is is an accolade to be uh to be proud of. The sneakiest of stone boys. Doesn't stink. What shoddy products are you pushing here? Yeah, no, it's it doesn't smell. It's it's this one's actually pretty good. It's, it doesn't stink. Um you don't you're not fumigating the household with it like which is good. And do do I have to get the old bamboo skewer there and get that bit sorted. Yeah, it helps when your if your hobby room is also the room you're sleeping in. You know what I mean? You don't exactly want to be stinking the place out of it, and even not if you're living in a house with pets or a missus. Yeah, you don't want to be fumigating the place either. You know what I mean? Everyone within a three block radius having to put a gas mask on because you're cracking out your uh, plastic glue. Holy Jesus. I can remember I remember that as a kid. I, I used to glue my miniatures together in um, my grandparents' shed because of the bleeding smell of it. Back when it was liquid polished styrene cement. Yep, that's what it said on the bottle. <laughs> Liquid poly cement. It was in, in like Tipex bottles. So it was like a white Citadel bottle. It was like a Tipex bottle. And it was just called liquid poly cement. Liquid polystyrene cement. Basically just a solvent. Even came with a little brush applicator. I remember that, yeah. It was the first bottle I ever bought. And then I went back in the second time to buy it, a good while later. I was like, oh, can I have a bottle of liquid poly cement? And he's like, oh, it's just called plastic glue now. And it was in a different bottle and rebranded and stuff. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, because the first one, I think, is... Do you remember when any of you old hands around... Where they used to put that sort of citadel sun face on everything, so like rattle cans and the plastic bottles. It was that sort of era. My dog fumigates quite well on his own. <laughs> I suppose, yeah, it depends what you're feeding him. I suppose he does fumigate quite well on his own. Feed him pork scratchings down in the local pub. I'm sure you would evacuate the place. Or is it you and you're just playing the poor dog? So is that what it is? He's your, uh... He's your fall guy. Now, this one's being problematic. And stubborn. Yeah, definitely. It's one of the foods I look forward to is uh, black country pork scratchings. When I come over to England next week. With the boys. Actually, not next week. I'll be over in England this weekend. Jesus, I keep forgetting. Time's flying, lads. I've had to put the car through the NCT again, but the brother sorted that out for me, thankfully. I had to get one of the wishbones replaced at the front. Uh, that's DMOT for all you royal subjects out there. It's the Irish version of DMOT. And then that once that's sorted, Jesus, there'll be no stopping me. Thankfully, my brother sorting it for me when I'm away. I'll have to get my bottle of whiskey or something on the way back, I reckon. As a nice little thank you, you know. <laughs> or a bottle of gin. He likes a gin as well. 
Oh, not go breaking aerials. So you can tell which ones it is that I glued together years ago because they've got very static poses and I've only just done. And then the newer ones that I've done. Because they're, you can see the new guys are a lot more dynamic, whereas these guys are very static. So I chopped and changed the guy on the right with a reposed arms and stuff like that. Some of them I did a bit more extensive work in regards to conversions. So this one's actually pretty extensively converted. So what I did was, that's a Borna head that I chopped and shaped. And this is a Stormboy helmet. It's slightly misaligned, so you can probably see. But I cut the face out of the Stormboy helmet and I poured the Borna head in. Uh, then with the gun arm, uh, I chopped the hand, I think. And reposed it a little. Yeah, so this hand is a different hand to what was on there. So this, I think, I think this was a pointing arm. Or, or something like that. And then I, I put the slugger on. And then when it came to the power claw arm, that's, yeah. So that arm, I think, was holding the chopper. And I cut it. And I think this power claw came off of the knob power claw clip. And it was actually on an arm on the other side. And I just chopped that off and had at it. And, yeah, so this one's, this one's probably one of the more converted ones that I have. So some of the, the ones that I've built now... They're a bit more dynamic, you can kind of tell. They have a bit more of a lean to them. Their poses are a bit more open. Whereas some of the older ones are very um, very static in their pose or their look. Which is understandable. So we have another one here. And we have loads of them. Plenty of them to be picking the, uh, the mask and putty off of. Nancy did be keeping us busy. And then we'll attack them with the black. Boy hand. And then after that, I'm thinking, phew, what we do then? I think we'll go, we'll attack the jetpacks with the Castellan Green after that. Or, yeah, no, we'll do the Castellan Green, and then I think we'll save the uh, harness straps, which are, I think it's dread back. Is it dread back? It is dread back. I'll do the straps in this color. We'll hit them up with the dryad bark, and we'll do do the skin then, then do dead world forest. That's just the base coat. Um, I'm just looking for base coats and washes at the moment. So even if I don't get final highlights, it's grand. I'm just looking for. I'm just looking for unit effect. If you get me, so like even if I don't get them fully fully painted, if they're eighty percent painted to my liking, um. A unit of 10 of them to 80% painted will look half decent, if you get me, as opposed to not painted. So, that's my focus at the moment, is just to, even if I get them to 80% painted, and then I can move on to whichever unit, maybe the commandos. And who knows, we won't even get a Chinork built before the end of the week. But we'll see. I've got a backup plan there. So he's so he's got a spare chin orc I can loot off him for the for the bat rips. Worst case scenario. So we'll go from there. But definitely this is the this is the most painting I've done in a very long time. I've not painted this many miniatures in this space of time in a good while. And paint pots. Gorka Market came with a tube of cement, if I remember right. It did, yeah. The dog and I are an equal accomplice in establishment. <laughs> I need to finish priming my newest can, says Deason. Sweet. What colour are you going to be doing it up, Deason? I have a good few cans myself that need to be painted up. But uh, I think they'll be projects for another day. If I had have found one of my DACA jets, I think this masking putty would have been perfect. Would have been perfect to do it. Um, I can tell which ones of these guys I did earliest because there's like smaller detailed sort of splodges of, of masking tape or the putty. Whereas as the night went through last night, um, 
I was just sort of plopping it on. Because it was taking too long. It was taking way too long. To sort it out. I can sort of see where I was showing the stuff down. The usual sort of areas. Trying to overlap, so not just on the pattern, like if you if you're masking stuff off, having it so that it looks like it's coming that the pattern continues under the under the likes of harnesses and stuff. So like see the way that this overlaps the harness here. What we'll do is when we paint it, it'll look like the pattern continues underneath, if you get me. Not that it's a specific pattern, because that way madness would lie, but um Just trying to trick the eye, if you get me. But yeah, again. <laughs> would not deal with this way in future for infantry. I would literally just paint the patterns on. I'll leave it at that. There's one there. But you I would not bother with putty at all. At all, at all. Because the camo is just too small. It does the job, but it's just way too small to be faffing around with it. See, I know myself too well. I was like, yeah, I bet you I'd put a bit of putty there. I would have. I know I would have. Would have been too blank for my likings. And another bit there, look. So Jesus, what else would I be doing with myself than taking putty off of miniatures at about 10 o'clock at night, huh? But I can definitely say, the past week, week and a half, last weekend, all I did last Saturday and Sunday was paint these things. I spent all of last weekend pretty much painting these guys up. Now they look absolutely amazing, but I spent a weekend painting 30 of these guys up. They look cracking. But holy Jesus, that was a uh, Herculean effort. The effect will be amazing. All 500 points worth of stone, boys. I think it's just short of 500 points. Three units of 10. Used to be able to take them in units of 20. I mean, if I could get away with taking 60 stone, boys. Jesus, I'd do it. Just for the crack. Just for the lulls. 60 stone boys cost you an arm and a bleeding leg to buy them but by jesus it would look most impressive i have an idea for a stomper a conversion and i think i can pull it off but i shall i shall keep it under wraps for now but it follows in the team of this army speaking of stompers that new box it's sold out already which is a pity would have been fun to uh, do an unboxing with Dim. Not that I really need it, as I already have. I think I have two stompers, two or three stompers. I have two stompers at least. I have the uh, Forge World stomper with the belly gun. That still needs to be built, assembled, and painted. And I have a stomper back from when it was originally released that I just primed and went eh that's a lot of miniature to paint with a paintbrush you're all right there jim but who knows maybe uh maybe a bit of dazzle camo wouldn't be a bad idea painting pattern for a stomper black and white patterns i reckon that would actually look pretty damn cool or maybe some digital camo could put off some pretty interesting techniques Here's another bit there. Look at this. Jesus. Hidden away some of it is. Right, if that bit's there, then that means that's a patch. I'm definitely going to end up missing some of this putty. I definitely am. Because the level of effort I put into patchwork and some of it is just <laughs> ridiculous. But hey ho, it's helping. He needs to be painted by himself. And we still got more to take off. Yay! That one's 
done. How many have we got left? Two. Four. Six. Eight. Nine. Nine of them to take the putty off of. Yeah, so the later ones I can tell. I was applying this with a two pick because the uh, applicator was just too big. And uh, I can tell as the application went on through the night, I became a bit more liberal and uh, I became a bit hard, you know, quick, quick and dirty is what I was going for. Just get the patches down. Don't be too pristine about it. Get them sorted. I mean, we've got the base layer. Well, on most of them. One, ones we haven't missed. Or what ones weren't sneaky enough to avoid the last coat of paint with the airbrush. We're doing all right otherwise. I think that's all of the uh, putty off of this guy. I think so. Can't spend too long looking at the one miniature. We've got too many to do. Evil Sun's Red, of course. Oh, nice. Nice and proper, even as Sci-Fi says. Can't go wrong with an Evil Sun's Red, because red ones do indeed and go faster. Some yellow for flare and a few black and white checks for good measures. Ah, deadly. Can't go wrong. My head has an image of a stomp painted as a volcano erupting with a head painted like an evil sun's glyph. Now, my top secret, my top secret sort of uh, project would be a storm boy stomper. Get that imperial terrain, you know, the big one, the big Prometheum tanks or whatever. Stick one of them on the back of it. Get a DACA jet kit. And have it either side. as like the side boosters or whatever. Right? And then just have a big, massive stomper. Like jump pack stomper. And then like convert its feet. Convert its feet so that they're like more like giant power claws. And then I do stuff like give it ball turrets underneath. Like the Grok Hunters out of the jets. You'd probably probably buy a jet or two. Buy a Daka jet kit or two. And you could have some of those Grok Hunters on the underside of it. And just have like a flying stomper with like claws for feet. That would be awesome. I just like the idea. I think it'd be cool. And we'd have to write, like, a data card up for it and everything, but, like, pfft. Imagine, imagine that. Imagine, like, a flying stomper and then building a giant plume for it underneath, like this. So imagine a stomper and something like this coming down to land on you. It would just be awesome, man. <laughs> I mean, you'd have to have, you'd have to have a base to sort of a dinner plate, like, but, you know. Lorcan's here. What's the story, bud? Norkins here, just came in to hear Dwayne talking about balls. I mean, context, please. We're talking about stompers. Stormboy stompers. I'm doing a load of prep work for the event next week that is 40k related, Lorcan. And then after that, we can focus on getting ready for UK Games Expo. Who else is going? Woo! Been mucking around with the airbrush, trying to get coats of paint on, and we are picking the putty off now to try and reveal spots for a camouflage pattern, but in hindsight, it would have been quicker to just paint the pattern on by hand. But onwards and upwards. We've learned lessons. Lessons have been learned. Get up, yep. Yeah, look at this one. Look at this stuff. Bleeding, come off, will you? Pain me how. Is 
Yeah, we're getting quite a lot of uh, nozzle clogs or tip drying up a bit, so a bit of overspray now and then. We chaired our orcs. By the time we put the wash on and we finish the other camo pattern or the black spots on them, you know, it'll be grand. And how I want to apply that part of the pattern is have it partially touching some of the grey spots, if you get me. You can't go wrong then. Does it look decent? I knew there'd be another one here. Look look at this sneaky here. But we nearly have most of it off now. Do 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 Yeah, there's another one there, look. Look at it. Try to hide in us. How dare you, sir? But yeah, we have. Oh, we have a game due on Thursday, actually. Hmm. Will I have time? There's so much painting to be done. Isn't the flying stomper with a giant plume just the Orban Mech Lamb Mini? Um, yeah, if the Orban Mech was like, Jesus. I, I don't actually know. Stompa, would a Stompa be bigger than an Orban Mech? I think the Stompa would be bigger than an Orban Mech. Um, it's not it's not massive massive but I think it's I think it's bigger than a I think it's bigger than an Orbamic. But yeah, that Orbamic lamb, yeah that looks sweet man. That box set when Expo's on, hopefully they're selling some of them. I would not mind getting my hands on one to be honest with you. And it would be a hell of a lot more entertaining than uh, watching me pick and putty off a of stone, boys. But onwards and upwards, lads. We're dealing batch painting here. We have a thousand points to get done. <laughs> by the end of the week, we have 1,000 points worth of army to have done by the end of the week. That just sounds nuts when I say it. And I'm already sick of picking this goddamn putty off. But we're nearly there. Putty's nearly done. We're nearly there. Yeah, so this would have been one of my force ones as well. Look. We're doing some damage to the paint job. But we're putting in another colour, so it's not the end of the world. Who would have thought using the metal tweezers is actually better? So if you had a plastic tweezers, that's probably the best bet. But uh, don't leave it on overnight because this is a pain in the ass to get off now. It's not too bad. It's coming off easy enough, but it's just, it's so much easier to take off when you've only applied it the first few minutes. So much easier to take off. It isn't as uh, stubborn to shift. And there's usually one around here. I can see the patterns or the areas that I've I'm always putting them on. To try and cover. There's normally one around here somewhere, yeah look. Sometimes I put one up here. Which I have this time as well. But it looks good. I think it looks decent. Is there any more on the leg? Nope, nope, nope. I don't think so. Like I said, I guarantee you there will be putty that will end up being part of some of these miniatures permanently. I'm working on my Ward of Blake again. Nice. So how are you painting up the white, Lorcan? For your wobs. For your wobbies. Paint up some Manoi Domino, is it, or what world of Blakest mix are you painting up? What filthy wobs? 
For those of you who don't know, Battletech, they're pretty much like... They're like the Mechanicus, you know. Crazy cult except with, uh, obsessed with technology and... Super secretive, controlling the markets, that sort of thing. They're pretty, uh... Pretty heavily entrenched in Baltic. And the Wobs are like the religious fanatic arm. They believe in their ward of Blake, hence the Wob moniker. They are ward of Blakists. And one more. They are crazy. Well, they were crazy. With their giant war spanning the galaxy, their jihad, that didn't end too well for them. I mean, it didn't end too well for most people. They were handing nukes out like free candy, but sure. Who doesn't? In the 24th millennium. I think that's all of the putty on this dude. I hope so, anyway. And then we're down to the last tree. Oh, well... Well, apart from Sneaky Hall over here, who managed to avoid this layer of paint anyway, but sure, Jesus, we'll deal with him another time. Idea, a metallic masking material that can be easily removed by passing a small magnet over the mini. Maybe. Have you ever seen that sort of ferris putty? Or the fluid? Fl oh, I don't know. Basically, it's a fluid. That has, I think it's like metal in it or whatever. Um, so if you had a putty that had iron in it, you could pass it over then. Do you know what I mean? Have it so that it was sort of semi stable. And then. Pass a magnet over it then. And at the very least it will kind of move and reveal itself. Do you get me? Or best case scenario it would actually sort of come off. I suppose if the magnet was strong enough and you got close enough to it. It would stretch and reach for the magnet. That would be... Maybe there's some... Uh, Maybe there's something to it, eh? Not a bad concept. But you just get stuff like this and put iron filings in it. And then... Yeah, can't go wrong. Look at that. I knew there'd be some there. There's probably some here as well. Look at this. Ha! Ha! And a bit there. Knew it. Gotcha. Right. And then there was two. My guys, this is wearing me out. And it's nearly half ten already. What can I say? I'm doing regular militia right now. I'll shoot you a photo. I did the white with the airbrush. Black prime. Then light grey all over. Then grey white. Followed by pure white on the raised surfaces. Ooh. Very nice. Last I'd work had nail polish so she could draw patterns in with a magnet when it was wet. Then it would dry in that pattern. Oh, sweet. That's really cool. So, it would have been a type of acrylic, so I don't see, yeah, I don't see why it would, don't see why it couldn't be a thing. Do not see why it couldn't be a thing. We are doing the very boring task of pulling all the putty off. But we're nearly there. Then we get to the fun part of applying all the black. And it'll just be in patches, in fairness. We're not going to be 
too liberal with our application of it. It's just anywhere where there's a gray patch from the putty, from the masking, anywhere that there's an area that was masked. There's one there. Anywhere where there is an area that was masked, basically we'll put a black patch touching it in some way or another, just for the visual. Oh my god, we're nearly there, lads. Jesus. And it'll look decent. Well, hopefully it looks decent. Should look decent. It's a bit bright at this stage, but... With the black model wash, that'll tone it back. You can see what I mean by when I poured that out, I poured way too much out, but whatever, it's not the end of the world. We get a decent amount in a bottle. I'm sure we're going to chew through loads of it by the time we're finished this project. Okay, man. Anything I'm not liking is every now and then I'm damaging the paint job slightly, but like I said, this is not the final stage, so I will be able to come back and tidy it up. But it's grand. Badoo, badoo, badoo. Boom. Right, onto the black stage. Do -do -do -do. Do -do -do -do. Right, I'm literally just putting this paint on anything. I don't even, because it's an airbrush paint, or... I'm not even really bothering to water it down. You don't need to. And I'm just coming in. Coming in hot. And cracking on. So. Black patch. See what I mean? I would have been just being so much quicker just painting by hand the patterns. Because you just get half decent at it, I think. I think it's from like painting a mix. All I'm looking to do is anywhere where there's a grey patch, I'm just hitting it with a bit of, bit of black somewhere along the line. Just to sort of break it up. I can, and look, I even found more goddamn putty. Look at this. Look at this sneaky hero up here. Huh? And then just come in and... Don't overload the brush. But... Get it to touch the grey patches. When you're laying it on. And it'll look grand. And boom, that's him done. On to the next guy. See how much quicker this is than trying to pick putty off. That's all you need to be doing. Pick your colors. Pick your patterns. Come in and just apply pattern as you want or need. Like I said, uh, criteria for this is just for it to be touching the gray patches. So a little bit of black. Anywhere where there's grey. And sort of a stabbing motion. So you don't want to be using a brush that you're too precious about. But just... Can you see it well? Just come in and touch it up. And it's way quicker. Holy Jesus, it's way quicker. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'll be uh I think I'll be sticking to hand painting on camo patterns. I'm just quicker at it. That one done. Bish bash bosh. A little bit of black over there. Yeah, that one's done. Next one. See? Doesn't take a lot of paint. Just a decent amount of control. And it'll be grand. You can't really go wrong. Less is more. 
tidy up any areas that have been damaged by the previous applications or scraping off the putty which is what I'm doing here I'm trying to find areas that have been damaged and tidy them up I mean really you could come back in with more grey and if you want to tie some of them together some of their patterns you can do that too but uh, I'm happy enough with the end result here we're only looking to put a little bit of grey in. We don't want to put too much. We don't want to overpower the whole thing. So we've got grey. And then we're just going to tie in black. A little bit of black. Anywhere where there's grey. A bit of grey here. That'll do. That'll do. I'll put a little bit up here. Because I didn't put any grey at all. So that'll... Give it a bit of variation. Like a sort of a spot colour. Boom, that's hidden done. That's like we're got that's three already. We're you know what I mean? We should be able to get the black done tonight. I reckon twenty minutes. What are we twenty eight? So forty eight. I reckon we'll be finished these by forty eight. I don't see why not. And then just follow it around. So light greys, dark greys, black together. You just pick like three colours. Greens, creams and browns. Or you could do, uh, you know, a dark blue, an ice blue. And sort of a medium blue if you want. Or white. Yeah, you might want to reverse it. Like, so if I was doing this again, maybe I would do grey. And then... Uh, those light grey patches. So with these guys, I'm going to leave that base coat as grey. And then I'll come in, they'll do light grey. And then... Or, or I might even do black patches. But I'll do light grey, I think. I'll do this off grey. Whatever it is. Come back in, do that. Do, do, do. And then change, vary the pattern as well. Like, it doesn't have to be. So there you go. That, like, that area was damaged. So fix and repair it. If possible. And if you don't like the shape of the grey pattern, you can vary it as well with the black. I can definitely see where... Some of the force miniatures that I did up the application is a bit neater, kind of, where I put the putty on. You don't want to just blob it on. You want to stab it on, kind of, in random patterns. You don't just want blobs, if you get me. And you can come back in and tidy with a... If you're not happy with it, you can come back in and tidy it up. Either with the grey or whatever colour you're picking. There you go, that's another one. That's the camo done on him. We just need to put washes on them and they're done then. Oh, popping in to say hello, says Grey Primer, what's the crack bud? These are not my typical hobby hangouts. As you can tell, this is panic mode. This is me just trying to get a thousand point army painted up by the end of the week. Is what this is. So that is what we are up to. We are trying to get 40 storm boys painted up. That's what we're doing tonight. We're not going to be staying up all night doing it. But if we get the camo pattern done on them. Hopefully, get them finished off tomorrow night then. Maybe born the midnight oil a little bit. That's the plan. I'm surprised I didn't put any putty there somewhere. 
I will. Put a bit in there, a bit of black there. Pew, pew, pew. I'll be out. And again, when we put the black wash on them, that will knock that tone way back. And we won't know ourselves. I think I'm just going to leave the backpacks just the uh, UIS solid drab. I'm not going to do a camo pattern on them. Because that's more effort. We're looking for speed, folks. We've got a need for speed. I missed one here. Look, there's a bit of putty there. I knew I would have missed one somewhere. Right, come off. Away with G Demon. How is Nick keeping? Today's Tuesday, isn't it? I keep thinking it's Wednesday for some reason. I'm pretty sure it's Tuesday. I mean, I could be wrong, dude. I could indeed be very wrong. I'm starting to lose track of days of the week as I'm either painting these or, or or thinking of how to paint them throughout my day. I'm like, hmm, how best to approach this? Like, it's going to be slow going when we're painting up the harnesses and such for this. But uh, until then, it'll be grand. It's Friday, Dwayne. You can get stuffed. <laughs> Inspire great primer to do some stone boy stomp as a diorama. Uh, Nick saying I haven't done a green skin diorama in ages. I must remedy that. I think you're right. Camo freehand is fast and easy, but just a little practice. It is. It's so much quicker, man. Like I like, I like the masking putty. It was a great idea, but just, I, I just I'm just myself personally. I'm just so much quicker just applying it by hand. Just so much quicker. And again, when time is of the essence, I don't have time to be mucking around with applying putty and then taking it off because that's like that's two that's two actions there. Whereas if we're just painting, I'm applying the paint. That's one action onto the next paint. You know what I mean? I'm sure applying the putty uh, for some paint jobs on big vehicles or whatever would pay dividends so i reckon in the bigger bigger miniatures and the bigger vehicles yeah but just just painting by hand especially for infantry infantry sized miniatures just getting the camo on by hand it's just so much quicker for myself personally way quicker and again i'm just not trying to apply too much black but just touching areas I already have the grey. Maybe with a little less black, just just as a spot colour kind of. I think that's the term anyway. But ultimately once we put that wash on it'll look at class. Is there any spots of grey that I missed that I didn't match up with a bit of black? No, no, grand. Next one. Boom. And just go through the camel. Uh, Stumble Queen of the Game is saying, thought it was Wednesday, Lorcan. I, I can trust no one. I shall click on my computer. It is indeed Tuesday. Thank Christ. <laughs> I was like, I'm not. I, I, I can't be losing days of the week. Not with the lack of progress that I have. I think we have also missed a bit of putty on this guy, have we? No? Yes? 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 Hey, look. Uh -huh. I'm always to your ways. You cheeky here. I bet you this is a bit there, yeah. Oh, Jesus. Didn't take the putty off of this guy at all. Though. How did he get through? So, yeah. Lesson learned. Don't apply putty for masking and airbrushing for camouflage patterns. Because it takes too long. That's done, that's done. It's probably a bit in his butt. Yeah. Boop. Any more? Any more? Any more? It's a bit there. 
And I think there's a bit on his knee. There is indeed a bit on his knee. I think that's it. Oh, there's a bit there. Whip. There we go. Well, Leo. So, for those of you just joining us, we are attacking Tordy Stormboys, and we are throwing our camo cutters on them. The idea being to get them all painted up for next Monday. And we also have 10 commandos. So we've basically got a thousand point army and we're trying to paint up. We've got 10 commandos with 30 stone boys. We have a chin or cup that needs to be built and painted, but I don't think that's going to happen if I'm being realistic at this stage. So we're going to just borrow one off of our good friend, Sci-Fi. He's going to hook us up with a chin or cup there. And I need to go find my Zagstruct, actually. Find where he's stashed. Or in failing that, I could bring Snake Rot. So either Zangstruck or Snake Rot. Ooh, okay, there's a bit of blob of black there. I didn't mean to get that there, but hey-ho, that'll do. That's where it lives now. We shall leave it to it. That's that guy done. <laughs> See, there you go. Even with the, like, the camouflage patterns, you make mistakes, they're happy mistakes. It lives there now. I shall not be evicting it. I can tell you that much. I do not have the time. Definitely don't have the time to be arsing around. Ba -doo, ba -doo. Some of these poses are pretty interesting, but they're also turning out to be a bit of a pain on the painting front. Like this guy. There's still a bit of putty. I can even see it because it's like a turquoise color. So what this reminds me of, the fact that it's stuck there, this reminds me of like a Forge World truck I got. It's the same sort of consistency as the molds because the one with the armored cab, I got the truck with the armored cab. But there's a bit of putty there. No. I got the truck with the armored cab and when I was taking it off the sprues and stuff like that, I noticed that like there was this sort of baby blue color rubbery sort of piece stuck into the side of the cab and I was like, What in the hell is this? It was a bit of a mold. From the casting process. I've never seen that before with a resin miniature. Like literally a bit of the mold. But there you go. Sometimes you get more than you bargain for. That's the black done on his camo. On to the next one. How much have I got? No, it's still not well done. It's still on the weekend. How much have I got done now? Uh, I'm still doing a lot. I still believe the computer, which uh, I reinstalled Windows on like two weeks ago. Yes. Did you do it remotely, Logan? Still got remote? Oh, well, he still has remote access. It's like already towards the Tordy Stone Boys is around 50 points. It's uh, it's like 500 or something, isn't it? Dwayne was sitting on my couch being accosted by my cat as I walked. Yes, I was having a great time with the cat. She was having great fun. I am now used to cats due to my flatmate having a cat. And that cat regularly tormenting me for pets and being fed. Um, Yeah. I never had cats when I was growing up. I don't think my mother liked them. I don't think my family, my mother's side of the family, liked cats. In fact, my stepfather's side of the family didn't have cats either. So we didn't, 
Nobody I knew had cats, so we've never been cat f people. So I assumed I wasn't a cat person until I moved in here, and I was like, "Yeah, they're all right, actually." You know, I wasn't against the idea of cats. I just wasn't too enamored with them. Whereas now I'm like, ah, they are both simultaneously like super smart and super dumb. This is hilarious. What's not to love? And so needy at times. Thought cats were independent creatures that didn't need us except for food and sustenance. But boy, Jesus, did I crave attention when they wanted. Holy Christ. I was like, you're supposed to be independent and aloof and not interested in me at all at all. And there you are buffing the shins off me. I'm surprised I have any hair left on my legs at all at all. So cats are hilarious. Dwayne was sitting yeah, yeah, yeah. Love the snake rock mini. Yeah, it's cool, man. It's a cool mini. I like the classic one. I'm not a fan of the plastic, new plastic one, but I love the pl classic metal. Killer hit for you, keep bashes on a budget. The plastic tabs on the bread bags are polystyrene. Don't be throwing them out. Holy Jesus, Deason. How much bread do you think I eat? When I do buy bread, I tend to buy soda bread. And I eat so little of it. Like, it only lasts like three or four days. And I got sick of throwing it out. So now when I buy it, like a cereal killer, I like put it in freezer bags and freeze it. And then I just toast it as I need it. How's that for oversharing? But like, I don't, I don't eat white bread much anymore. Because it just goes off, man. When you're just, uh, when you're feeding yourself, you know what I mean? Stuff just goes off. You're only cooking for one. There's only so much bloody bread I can make. Or eat. Not even make. I'll put a black patch there. Grey, grey. All the greys are done. All the greys are picked. Black patches on the greys. We'll put one there. Bop, bop, bop. That'll do. I found putty on his butt. Look at you, Trains. Look at you being a sneaky hero, huh? Look at this. Look at the bleeding cheek of this. Boom. That's him done. Next one. Or as DJ Khaled would say, another one. <laughs> because he wanted to be reminded of his existence. Yay! Black for the camo. Be good fun. We're going to play Hero Quest. I think there's even going to be games of Blood Bowl played. We're going to be playing our 40k league. So there's going to be battle reports for us up on the Warboss channel. This is all stuff on the Warboss channel. And then finally, once this event is over, I can get back to my mix. Mind you, UK Games Expo is the end of next month. Ugh. So we're going to have to play some Leviathans between now and then so we can teach people how to play it again. That's what I spent a good chunk of Essen doing. I was teaching people Battletech. Teaching people how to play Leviathans. Running the sort of uh, big games or tutorial games. That's that one done. Next one. And having tons of fun. Who gets the crust from the sandwich making factory? Sandwiches packed never have crusts. Did they not? Sure, not everyone eats bread, but they use those tabs and all kinds of other products too. Yeah, it's um, sheet styrene is what you're looking for. It's, it's styrene. You can get sheet styrene. Um, some signage, I think, is sheet styrene. But you can get it all sorts of stuff. You can also buy it in model shops for crazy money, but hey ho. It's 
say la vie. I regret not making a cup of tea before starting this stream. Well, we shall soldier on. I'm going to get the black finished in all these camo patterns. Probably take me, I don't know, another half an hour. What did we say? I thought it would have been done by now, 48. I mean, I've got a fair chunk of them done. I'm about halfway through doing the black and the patterns. And then just model wash them. Will they soldier on and keep going? I could go until half 11. Ugh. Pushing the boat out. Could keep going until half 11. Hmm. These miniatures won't paint themselves. So I reckon if we square this camo off. Yeah, that's what I'll aim for tonight. We'll just, we'll just get this grey camo done. So we're going to do the black patterns. And then after that... I'm just going to black wash a lot of it. And then that's that's literally the grey camo done then. So then tomorrow I can focus on the backpacks. And Thursday, Thursday is supposed to be for gaming, but I don't fucking know. Hmm. There's a lot of painting to still be done. So I shall see on Thursday. I was due to go to an Alpha Strike tournament last Saturday, but I had to... I really had to sort of knock that on the head because I got all the basing done. I am way behind on my painting schedule. I mean, they're going to look mint when they're done, but I am way behind. Way, way behind. That's another one done. Next guy. I'm about halfway through, I think. Wash them today, and they'll be dry tomorrow. And we're playing Levs on Thursday night. Yeah, we'll get one game in. I won't be staying around super late on the game at night, but we'll get a game, a game of Levs in. I'll stick around for a little bit, but then I will be calling it early, probably. But we'll definitely get a game of Levs in. Like, Levs doesn't take that long. It's only six turns. Like, it's pretty quick. So we'll be grand. And then after that, I'll be coming home and painting. Hopefully there's no delays coming home. And I get back at a reasonable hour. And I can get sorted. I actually quite like this one. This one's good. Lots of the smaller patches was is better visually, but it's I know it's more of a pain in the ass in regards to application and especially putty. But again, lessons learned when doing patterns. Don't bother with mask and putty. Just paint them on by hand. It is so much quicker. Look at the pace we're going now. Like holy Jesus. Just way quicker. As long as it's touching the grey patches. Beep, bop, bop. Grand. Show unto me the grey. Be careful in the application as well. So I have to take into account areas that are going to be the harnesses. They are going to be painted brown. So you're not even going to... No point in point painting black on an area that's going to be painted over again by another color, if you get me. So all that section's going to be triad bark, I think it is. A brown color. Paint a bit up there, a little bit there, just because there's a lack of colour there. It's all like, great, that's that dude done. On to the next one. I'll get the wash on him tonight. There'll be no stopping us. Go, 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 go. We're taking no prisoners, guys. We're taking no prisoners. We're not stopping for no one. If someone falls off the ship, that's it. You better be able to swim to shore. Because these bleeding storm boys won't paint themselves. 
Get it going. Again, the pattern is just dab it in. Anywhere there's a bit of gray, make sure the black's touching. That's what we're going for. Nothing fancy. Actually, we're going to join these two up. Sure, why not? Nothing fancy. As long as it works. Don't be too liberal. can actually probably do with a smaller brush. But this is working. The pace is grand. Why mess with something when it's working? Bip, up, up. Be a bit of grey over here. We're going to put black there. That's done. That's done. That's that one done. Next one. Same again. Bit of the black there. I'm trying to break up the grey shapes. They're looking very polka dot for my likings. So I'll try to put like elongated sort of black patterns. Break them up a bit. See if this works. I can tell by the technique that this was an earlier one I applied because it's lots of little small patches. I mean, which looks cool, but would have taken longer to apply. So you can tell, I, I can tell anyway, from going back over, I can see where I've tried to speed the process up a little bit. I actually quite like his pants on this one. So smaller, yeah, smaller applications. Better control with the brush because it's a bit of hassle trying to apply the Masking putty with a toothpick as it's drying. That was a bit problematic. Something I had to walk around, but it is what it is. I've tried it out. I like the product, but I would stick to applying it to vehicles, is what I would say to folks if you were thinking of using it. And I would just paint by hand. Especially if you're stuck in a bind like me. And don't have much time to be uh, dedicating to application, you know. All oh, the grey camo actually looks pretty good, those pants. I really like those pants. That's that one done. How many have we got left? We are on to... Uh, these guys... Our storm boy lollipop sticks. We are down to three, six, seven, eight. We're down to eight. It's the final countdown. The wife ear those rice cakes in the album also. Ooh. The rice cakes. Oh yes, I know the packets you're on about. The ones we get here, you do get like toffee ones. Or flavored ones, but they have that sort of plastic with like metal wire inside of it, if you know what I mean. Jesus, yeah, I haven't had those in a while. I haven't had those in a long time, actually. Yeah, break up the pattern. This black is starting to dry out. So I must move quicker. Break up the shape. Pew, 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 pew. Anywhere the paint's been damaged as well, we can fix that. We'll add in a bit there, so why not? A little bit hitter, ditter in yonder. If it's a. Uh, if there's a bit too much of a light grey area. Oh, my throat's killing me now from talking. Jesus. Oh, you see, putty. Look at this cheeky. Look at him. Look at him. You think you can hide from me, my friend? All right. It's going to have to be stabbed off him. See? See what I mean? You're bleeding now. Ta da! Not today, sunshine. 
Not on my watch. Like I said, we're taking no prisoners. Right, camo done. Camo done. Uh, I've got to do a bit of black there. There's too much of that light gray. Beep, beep, beep. Grand. Grand. All right. On to the next one. This is hilarious. There's literally like... <laughs> stacks of them. And then over the other side, it's just like all the basing. Like all... This is the dump box or whatever but it's just like loads of them we got the cup out of the way it's just like it's just blocks everywhere they're bleeding everywhere <laughs> we're being swamped i tell you swamped take a slurp of the paint water scar don't dehydrate jesus well some of the tubs that i've been using to clean the old uh airbrush or dump the airbrush off in has a uh, airbrush cleaner and oh ho ho there'd be no fucking returning from that I can tell you it'd be nice knowing me I'm sure the paint isn't too bad but uh, Jesus that cleaner stuff Oof. you would not want to be sipping on it I tell you that much yeah so anywhere I've damaged the paint I can come back in as well and I can, I can just cover it, like, you can just, you can just fix paint jobs, you know what I mean, tidy it up. Anywhere where I've had to be a bit forceful in regards to trying to get the putty off, so there for instance. There's a few of them where it's been damaged. And try not, try not to do just blobs, try and do like sort of elongated shapes or stabs stabby stab stab the paint in anywhere where there's a blank patch you can always just throw an extra one in as well just to sort of break up the color one up here but that's you know what i mean that's there's a strap there there's a strap here most of this is going to get painted anyway you know what i mean so it's not it's not the end of the world and that's another one done on to the next one Wash off the paint and crack on. All 30 of these are now going to be the same sort of color scheme, which is okay. I think it would be a bit more problematic if it was, um, if it was a different unit, but I'm going to have to give them unit markings or something to sort of differentiate between the different units if you get me so I'll, I'll have to come up I was thinking I was actually thinking of this like last week if I do red red blue and gold isn't it red blue and gold squad so if I do if I do the squads like that they're um See if anyone can get the reference. I think it's red, blue, and gold. We'll see if anyone's uh well we'll see if I'm correct. I think it's red, blue, and gold. Red, blue, and gold squad. I just thought it'd be funny. But yeah, if I do like a strip on the base maybe or unit markings on the backpacks or on the shoulder, I have transfers I could use from Blood Bowl. I think I'll use Blood Bowl transfers, the numbers and stuff. And then maybe a fleck of color around the base or something like that. Star Wars, yay! Maybe put a color dag on the back of the base. Discreet like squadrons from a franchise. Could do. It is indeed Star Wars. Red, blue, and gold squad. Come on now, come on. We're nearly there. Jesus. What time we are? We're 11 bills now. We'll go until half. We'll go until half. That's it. We're wrapping it up at half. That's 
Well, you have uh, jobs to be good and upper. Early in the morning. But if we manage to box off this uniform, it'd be helpful. Do you know what? It would be super helpful if I put it on bleeding screen. Have I been painting off screen most of this time and none of you have been saying anything to me? I mean, that much of a manic painting spree. It's like step, 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 step. Paint, stab paint onto it. Doesn't matter. Be grand. Be grand. Just go, go, go. We're not stopping for no one. Beep, 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 beep. Yeah, man, I, I reckon when we get to, we'll get to this stage of washing, it's going to be, it's going to be grand. Washes are nearly always, like, super quick. They don't take too long to sort out. That's done, that's done up here. We can do a bit of black up here. Bup, 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 bup. That'll do. There's a bit too much light gray there. We'll put in a bit of black there as well in the pattern. I'm sure there's a bit of gray hidden underneath there somewhere. We'll put a bit there. Bup, bup, bup. I'll do. Next guy. You can join the stack. I was stunned by seeing you paint lots of things. <laughs> you and me both, bud. You and me both. I think this is the most productive I've been with painting for a long time. I think it really sort of takes an event or enjoying playing a game to be sort of my catalyst of enthusiasm to get stuff done. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think my problem with Battletech at the moment is I don't have... <laughs> I reckon if I had a campaign going, I'd I'd have stuff painted up. Like, I was due to play one of the lads, Eric. We were due to start a campaign. And I painted up a company of mechs. I just did them in, like, simple... These simple sort of colour schemes. I painted them... I'm not sure... Yeah. This sort of... That colour. I think I have some of them in a wash. This one. You know what I mean? So... And the theme of that unit was like ubiquitous mechs or mechs that were common. So lots of common mechs. But um, we just, he, he moved. He moved to Cork, I think. These things happen. Hope he's doing well. And uh, look at this sneaky horizon. Look at this, there's a bit of putty here. The bleeding cheek. This arm, I think, is a knob arm. I just wanted to do that uh, axe arm because I like the look of it. But it's sort of the cool thing about these stone boys. So normally when they're posed on the base, they're very static. If I can get a body of one, right? So normally when they're posed on the base, they're very static like that. But because the mounting point for these dudes is going to be on the backpack, you can change the pose of it so if you put the head off kilter and then you change the pose of it so we'll have them mounted by his backpack and twist them a little bit it makes it look way more dynamic it's just something so simple like small things still down to do the campaign if you want two bleeding right when we're finished doing expo and we've played through levs so what are we looking at what are we, what are we looking at there april may after after Expo in June, summertime, we're doing campaigns. You and me, Larkin, it's happening, man. It's happening. We're going to get a Battletech campaign going. Get some battle reports. What era would you like to play in? I think my problem is I've always sort of leaned towards Succession Wars, but we can do more sort of funky stuff. You know what I mean? Be a bit of crack, do a Chaos campaign or something. Do a two-player chaos campaign, can't you? 
And then the other player just plays as the up four. So how would you deal with then? You we'd each sort of maybe create a unit and we'd have up four. So would you be playing the same campaign or would you be playing like two campaigns simultaneously? Dun, dun, dun. I mean, we could come up with something interesting. Maybe a unique scenario or two for Chapel, eh? Hmm. Put a bit of black in there. Have a bit of fun. June, no longer music festival to his campaign season. Have fun, gents. Oh, well, he will be. He will be good crack. We can do the literal campaign I wrote and got published. We could indeed do the literal campaign you wrote and got published. Is it sort of unit restricted or what way? I, I'll be honest, I still haven't read it. My, uh, my late of rate of literature consumption for Battletech has been lacking of late, so uh, I, I beg forgiveness in not reading your campaign system yet. But I do know, I have listened to you, I do know it, it uh, has something to do with water. Look, is there more putty? To, look at this fucking... Look at this shit. Look, I knew. I bleeding knew there'd be putty in front of you. I was like, this, this area here looks a bit suspicious. But it's still got putty on it. Never again, lads, I'm telling you. Never again. I think he's done. Beep, boop, boop. He looks done until we put a wash on him and then we find out that there's putty. You know? What are we down to the last one? It's the final count. I apologize for the terrible, terrible singing. But apparently, this is what I do to me, Mrs. All the time. She'll say something and I'll be like, Song! Song it reminds me of. Ha 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 ha. Yeah, like, like, reminds me is just like Nickelback. It's like, do 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 do. No. Did you know the Nickelback was the first band that I ever saw live? Like, proper band. Yeah. When they were on tour. And I was a teenager. I didn't know any better. In fact, I was so young that my cousin, older cousin Paul, had to fucking bring me which I thought was funny and some board he was dating at the time ah Jesus cousin Paul had a game fair play to him <laughs> on camera paint the miniatures on camera remind yourself don't tell me that's more bleeding putty there is it no oh thank Christ Paint miniatures on camera, so the kind folks can see. There's more than his ass. Look, look at this fucking look at this. We're nearly there. We're nearly there. We're nearly there. And then we can wash them all. And by Jesus, we want one of ourselves. Put a bit of black up there. Break up that. Do do do. I don't like the shape of that. Bit of variation. There we go. Bleeding. Hey ho. Happy days. I think I missed some of his leg there, but yeah. It can be a pattern failure. Orcs aren't exactly known for a. Uh, Okay, one more. One more and then it's wash central. I'm gonna have to start from the bottom of the stack. <laughs> right, bit of black there. Bush. Boosh. Uh, a lot of that area is gonna end up being strapped so it's not the end of the world. I think my pattern application was a lot better earlier on in the stream, but sure, we're, we're, we're nearly there. 
There is that one guy we totally forgot to spray, but you know what? I'm just going to leave him for tomorrow. Or as an example, do you know what I'll do? I'll actually paint him by hand and prove that I would have been better off. This brush is annoying me. Different brush. You, you'll do. Oh, Jesus Christ. This is even worse. Ugh. Is there a decent brush around here? Probably not. El Cheapo Brush Central. I think I just bought like a bag of... Ah, no, Jesus, this is just this bad. Fucking holy shit. Come on now. There has to be... No. My God. Wait, there's a sea of... Ah, 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 what's this? That's a shade brush, right? Okay, well, hold on to that for when we're doing our wash. There has to be... There has to be a half day some brush here somewhere. There has to be one. No. This is a terrible too. Oh, this is way too small. Look at this. You would be here until bleeding Christmas with this one. No. Be gone. Back to the one we left. Look at this traitor. How dare you, sir. How dare you. I think the problem that we're having is I'm losing what's left of me bleeding marbles. <laughs> Right, more paints. A little bit, not much. That'll do. That'll do, donkey, that'll do. Oh, are we nearly done? That's done. Needed some here. Pop, 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 pop. Not even watering it down because it's like airbrush paint. That's like a decade old at least. So it's consistency is weird, man. Do that part here, because that was a bleeding travesty and a half, that was. That's grand. That's grand. Do we need some applied here? Yes, we do. Pop, pop, pop. That'll do. Grand! It's washing time. Now we pick up the pace. Oh. Well, it helps if you don't stick your bleeding finger into it before you start using it. What have we got? 15 minutes. Right. Hold on to your pants there. Yeah. Alright, so that wash needs to be... Give this a quick clean out. Taking no prisoners tonight. It's a water aid in the depths of the tort succession war. Yeah, th totally up for Lorcan. We'll do it. At least you're finding the putty nail better than when we were dealing with metals. This is true. Actual gag reflex. <laughs> 20 years from now. Is that more putty? I would not be surprised. He's on the first band I, I saw live was Nirvana. Well, the first band I saw live was the Breeders because they were the first on the bill on the Nirvana gig. Jesus, look at you. That's right, folks. Lorcan is indeed as old as the hills. Is it not the paint rather than the brush? Let's hope it doesn't dry transparent, leaving a vague shade. Ah, it'd be grand. Right. Model wash. Lots of shade brush. Let's wet it up. And let's just get cracking in our in our lollipop stick pile of storm boys. Look at them. Look at them. Glorious. <laughs> This can get out of the way. I don't need that anymore. Now. We are just getting our wash on. We don't care. Just get it on quick. 
and leave them dry and upright. And it will tone this gray uniform way down, which is what I want because it's a bit bright for my likings. Now, it means that the camo patterns are being toned down a bit as well, but that's okay. It'll all tie together. That is the plan. Well, that's the plan now. Should I have gone with a grey? Mm, maybe. Or whatever. It's too late now, folks. There ain't no turning back. All right, applications done. Next guy. Yay. So, uniform areas, his color. I do the inside of his color, like leather color. So is it bestial brown? I think it's bestial brown's the color. But we just wanna get this done tonight. Get the grey uniform done, sure Jesus, that's uh it's not bad going. I mean ideally I'd want to come back in with a really light dry brush before we move on to the green. But I just I can't see that getting done tonight. We are using Vallejo model wash if people are curious. It's the what wash we're throwing on these guys. Do do just in case a bit of application around there. That will all need to be blacked out again, or done in green. And sorted. Boots will need to be blacked out. That's that guy done. Stop falling over! God damn it! Ten minutes. Ten minutes ain't happening, man. But look. We've committed ourselves to the wash cause, so... We're just gonna keep going until we're finished washing. That's all. Just get it done. The more sensible of you would probably be going to bed at a reasonable hour. But not me. No, 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 no. Not with this many storm boys to be done. I can't afford sleep. Sleep is for the weak. Plus, I can always sleep on the bus in. Yeah, the daily commute. Make use of that hour it takes for me to get into the city centre. It's like, ah, I could be sleeping on the bus. I'm sure, it'll be grand. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> Lol. Grand. That's him done. Next one. Boys at the bottom of the pile. Let's hope it doesn't dry. Yeah, luckily I'm not sensible. Yep. Yeah. You're not the only one, so. But I have noticed with the wash, it does help differentiate between them. So some of the detail is pretty soft in the torso underneath the arms in regards to the harness. You know what I mean? Like some of these, like they, they, these guys have been out since what, 2009? So some of the details are a bit soft in some of the areas because they're just old miniatures, man. They've been, they've been casting them for bleeding ages. Well, like 15 years. 15 years of these Stormboy miniatures. The first fully plastic Stormboys. The last ones before this were the third edition multi-part plastic and metal. Before that, it was um, the second ed ones, and they were they were metal. Look at this. They were indeed metal. I think that's this guy sorted. That's this guy sorted. He gets added to the block of polystyrene that we've poked loads of holes in to stand all these in. Yay! 
I mean, your application of the washer. But yeah, you can see under here, under the arm, it's a bit soft on the detail between where the belt is, kind of. I mean, it's not the end of the world. I would like to try and get like an OSL effect on these guys, but I think like uh, I'm very hesitant to try it with the airbrush. I wouldn't want to do like a color scheme like this, put this much effort into it, and then end up like airbrushing it away, trying to get OSL. Whereas I know I could probably do it pretty comfortably, uh, dry brushing. Not going too crazy, but just, just a little bit of dry brushing, you know what I mean? I think it's doable that way, you know? That wouldn't be a bad idea. Don't try to change the law. Sleep when you're dead. Yep, this is true. All the sleeping. Second end word lead from before white metal. Yes. Don't go chewing on your miniatures back then, eh? They were the hilarious ones. They're the ones with the like mechanical clockwork rocket packs. Like they're they're pretty crazy looking those ones. I do still have five of them in dims. I mean, I could actually do like a second head orc army. What I really need to do is get that rogue trader battle wagon. With that battle wagon I have up and running. Because I think, was it decent? Oh, Rivets and Daka. Rivets and Daka gave me... Um, Give me wheels for it. Yeah, before he passed away, he gave me wheels for it. So yeah, that needs to be done. That needs to be done. As always, when it comes to hobby, I do. If I do nothing, I procrastinate. If nothing else. That doesn't even make sense. I'm starting to run low on... My tea reserves are, are drying up. That's what's wrong. I need more tea. But we're, we're getting our wash on. We're washing these guys, man. We're not stopping. I ain't stopping for nobody. I swear to God, if I find putty now, I'm going to fucking stab someone. Jesus Christ. You better not be harboring any illegal putty, good sir. Make sure there's no bubbles. Doo -doo 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 -doo. And we're grand. There you go. Go dry. Go dry with your friends. Clockwork rocket packs, or as I like to call them, clocket packs. <laughs> I like that one. Like once we have this camo done, that is the bulk of these dudes done. We're just gonna have to constell and green the bejesus out of like the shoulder pads and the feet. You know what I mean? It's all about just picking out detail at that stage. But even just the jetpack in green, doing the jetpack and the Castell in green, right? And the uniform, like that's 80% of the model. Then you just do metal on the weapons and paint the skin. And even if we just put a wash in them or whatever, like that's, that's tabletop enough for me, I think. It'll look good in a battle report from a distance, but they're not, they're not going to win any painting competitions. And most of what people are going to be looking at when they're looking at them is the base anyway. You know what I mean? They're not going to be too enamored. Like, what grabs your eye is, oh, hey, it's on a big, like, 
I gave him this guy, but he forgot to spray paint. Like, if I put him on his base. Where's your attention? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, oh, there's a dude on the end, but holy Jesus. You know? I'll paint him by hand. I'll do that by hand. Tomorrow or whatever. It's like your eye is being drawn to the plume so we can afford to not be too precious about a... Uh, about the storm boys themselves, which is hilarious. But they, they'll look good. I reckon they'll look good. I think they'll, they'll look decent. I'm pretty happy with the execution. I've wanted to do that project for years. I just hadn't built up the confidence to try and execute it because it's... You know what I mean? They're storm boys. They're not exactly cheap. I think it's like 30 euros for five of them. I know I bought my guys like 14 or 15 years ago when they first came out or whatever. The majority of them. But I had to buy a few to sort of fill gaps because I couldn't find some of them. And of course, after I built those dudes, I found the ones that were missing. But that's neither here nor there. But actually having the confidence to build the project the way I'd want to do it. I'm like, I've wanted to convert Stormboys like this since forever. But it wasn't until I did some smoke plumes and explosion plumes for Battletech, which are smaller, and I just made them out of paper clips. You know what I mean? So I'm just making them out of paper clips. They're sort of standalone explosions, you know, like this one. And worst case scenario, if I muck this up, I'm it's just some clump foliage and paper clips and a bit of plastic card I cut. You know what I mean? So cutting your teeth on a smaller project. Isn't a bad idea. And then once you've got your technique down, I'm sure you're laughing then, you know what I mean? There's no stopping you. And then it helps you build up the confidence to actually execute a big project that you want to do. And, you you know, I don't know if everyone's that way, but I tend to be fearful of ruining my really expensive miniatures. Like, I, I really want to get one of the battle wagons I have and literally saw it in half and make it wider, like fatten it. I think that would be great. I have a really good idea of how I would do it, but I just haven't done it because it's a battle wagon. <laughs> it's not a cheap miniature, but I just need to strum up the courage. You know what I mean? To just take a saw to a battle wagon and saw it in half down the middle and then... and then widen it with plastic art. But even like the dropships, the dropships, the new plastic dropships that are coming out, I think that would be cool if I did, um, if I did clump foliage, like, like imagine this, okay, but just straight for like your union dropships or whatever. Like that look fucking class, man. Your map scale dropships as they're coming down and just do it in the footprint of the hexes. That'd be easy enough to do. You know, I still have bits of co-hanger. I could easily, sh you know, throw that together. And I've got the painting technique down now as well. That was another thing I was a bit worried about. It took me, like, a couple of attempts to figure out, well, actually, I need to put this paint on first and then the other one. So figuring out the, the order in which to paint on paints with the airbrush to get the desired effect. You know, a bit of trial and error there. But sure, you have to be willing to risk it for a biscuit, you know what I mean? If you're afraid of trying things, you won't learn. You won't change, so. If anything, that's what you should learn from me. Don't be afraid of uh, trying new things. Change is scary, man, but don't be afraid of it. I mean, it's easy to say when they're really expensive miniatures, but they're just... actually bothering to try out techniques on stuff you don't really care about for us is probably the best idea or just do like a scratch miniature or maybe you have a miniature that you don't really care about or i mean we're in the land of 3d printing now so you can get somebody to 3d print something you can experiment on that uh, if you're more worried about your really expensive minis And then build up the confidence there, sort the technique out, get down the paint job that you want to do. 
You know what I mean? And then hash it out there and then throw it onto your, your actual manager or your project that you want to do it on. We are just washing everything. What are we at? Half 11. Jesus, I was hoping to be done by now, but look. We're about halfway through, I think, with the old washes. We're just keeping her trucking. And then we're calling it a night once the washes are done. How many have we got left? Uh, I think we're about halfway. I think, yeah, I think there's about 14 or 15 or something left. But yeah, well chuffed with how the plumes came out. If nothing else, even if these guys look terrible, or I'm not too happy with the colour scheme for them, like, the plumes look great. They really do. I'm well chuffed with how they turned out. They turned out way better than I thought they would. Way better. They look really good. I'm rather surprised with myself, to be honest with you. Well, who knew I can actually paint if I put the effort in and concentrated? Hey! <laughs> but they do. They look class, man. And I'm, lo I'm looking forward to getting some plastic dropships for Battletech as well and doing it. And then maybe that's Stomper as well. You know? I seem to have just... Crack open the Pandora's box of uh, clump foliage. Oh, I forgot to do this guy's color. Ah, yeah, to hell with it, whatever. Seems to have opened the clump foliage, uh, Pandora's box of clump foliage, and it's like, well, I can do explosions, I could do dropships, we'll do storm boys. Sure, Jesus, we'll stick stompers on them and everything, it'd be grand. It'd look amazing. Show it will. Again, we are just washing everything. With our shade brush. I'm sure they used to have wash brushes. thing that's going to be real pain in the ass with these guys is picking out all those harness buckles. I've said it a few times. I'm kind of like a broken record at the moment. But there's certain details I know that once they're picked out, the visual of the miniature is going to shift quite substantially. Like picking out the harnesses is going to tidy the miniatures up quite a lot. But even just doing the Castellan green of the backpack... That's going to look class. I'm undecided in what colour to do the guns. Whether I should do them just like a bare metal or whether I should do them like a uh, castell and green as well. I'm not going to do them on a camouflage sort of pattern or their own camo pattern because it's just time. Again, we kind of need these to be done tomorrow night. It's kind of where I'm at. They really need to be done. Uh, picking out the colours in Zandri Dust. Um, not using too many different colours either. Kind of keeping the palette a bit restricted. So like any of the bone areas, Zandri Dust. The colours, Zandri Dust. I'll just hit them with a brown wash or whatever. You know what I mean? And then maybe I'll do the skin last or something. Or sh who knows? There's just... There's a few different elements, and it's just trying to decide when to paint which element. Where it'll have the least knock-on effect to other parts that have already been painted. I suppose it's the logistic part of it now, at this stage. But we are smashing them out. Looks like we might be finished by 12. Might. Might with a capital M. And then hitting the hay and getting up early again. Yay! And rinse and repeat. So we don't want too much wash. Because we don't want to drown out the colour scheme we've done. We also want enough that we can actually pick out the detail and stuff. See? go from there how's everybody else's progress doing people still chipping away in the miniatures 
How did you do with your uh, Ward of Blake guys? Lorcan, did you get a good few of them done? Here goes the painting. What about Mark? Mark came in here. You doing hobby, Mark? You old snakey. Snake in there. But I might actually use that ubiquitous company that I came up with, Lorcan, for the, that campaign. Actually get some use out of them. I mean, I think there's a Centurion and a Cyclops in it that aren't ubiquitous. That's about the only things. But I just try to keep a very sort of succession wars, generic stuff. What what were the most common mechs? You know, so it's like Phoenix Hawks. I've sent you the progress photos of the Wubbies. Wub, wub, wub. I do not have... Screen capture set up for progress pictures, but we will next stream, if I remember. <laughs> we used to do that in streams when we were wrapping up, get people to post up their progress on what they got done in the stream. And we might go back to doing it. All right, that's that one done. Go, 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 go. We were down to our last few. What have we got left? What have we got left? So we've managed to get the uniforms mostly boxed off for these dudes. That's what we have left. This is what we're this is what we're chipping away at. Forty of them. I suggest people not to try and do thirty storm boys at once. I suggest trying to break them down. Like even a unit of ten would have been way more manageable. But I know that if I had to paint a ten and finish them, and then look to paint more of them, I would have been like, "Oh Jesus, I've finished these," and it would have seemed insurmountable. Whereas. I built all the bases at the same time, so I'm just I'm just painting all of the stone boys at the same time. Which seems like absolute goddamn madness, but hey ho. Onwards and upwards. This is what I do. I leave at lastminute.com. And then and then I attack big units. So this this is what I did with uh, when I was painting me boys units. I wouldn't just paint like five at a time. I learned to try and do that later on. What I was trying to do was paint 30 of them at a time, and I was like, ah, oh, Jesus. I'd get born out. You know? And I'd be, you know, my friends would be like, well, well, how many were you painting? Not 30. Well, no wonder you got born out. You know what I mean? It's like, bite sized chunks, maybe. But I don't know. I'm, I'm on some side, but I'm on a hype train. I'm just picking. We're just, we're just born into midnight oil to get these done. That's all. We're just, we're going nuts. We're going nuts. We're going for broke. Bit too much wash there. Wick what we don't need away. But I am loving that it's helping the definition of where the straps and such are. For there, and I come back later and sort it out. Bad news, Stone Boys are deploying on the desert world and the Sarge wants the lads in desert camo. Well, good luck. Finish priming and painting the base layer on can two and three. Nice. Sweet. I have yet to paint up any killer cans. In fact, yeah, I don't have any killer cans painted up. And I've loads of them. Jesus. But, but, I'm thinking the likes of dreads and cans and stuff will be way easier to paint. I think I was starting to paint them up um, in a sort of a rust base coat. And then um, 
the idea, the idea being to then put chipping fluid on and then do their paint scheme and chip them up that way, if you get me. But uh, I just haven't been playing 40k, if I'm being honest. I haven't played any Tinted. There just hasn't been uh, that general sort of push for me to to get 40k stuff done because I'm just I'm just not using it like you know what I mean but um we're doing the war boss meet next week so this is the sort of push the drive the catalyst to get me paint on miniatures you know we're gonna be making battle reports from it that will come out on the war boss channel the orc war boss channel we'll be doing a league so we're each playing like five games or whatever and there was a custom wooden spoon made for whoever comes in last place which actually looks pretty cool the grottiest git and then there's a there's a trophy for whoever comes in fourth place which looks pretty cool too but we're going to be doing bat reps for him so so they got to look good Tommy's here. Tommy Mac, what is your process of getting down a scheme? Winging it, test models, little notebooks of paint used, the struggle to get a scheme down to produce on mass. Uh, at this moment in time, Tommy, I'm trying to sort of emulate a scheme that I tried on a battle mech, but I'm also winging it. So I painted uh, Carl, uh, Grey Dark Carl, blah, 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 I can't even talk. Grayson, uh, my brain. Anyway, I painted a mech. And I like the camo that I did on it. And then I'm just sort of winging it with this now in that I'm adding in the black patches where I didn't previously. And instead of kind of spots, it was in stripes. So it's just, I'm winging it for this. And then I'm thinking the Castellan green along with this sort of gray camo will make a nice contrast, but I've never done it before, so I'm kind of, well, I tell a lie. I did it on this guy. So the green of the barrel, and then the grey of his, like, shoulder pads or whatever. So that's what's kind of inspired me to do these stone boys that I have, but I didn't do any black in him. So, kind of already having an idea of what I want to do, but also kind of winging it. Just go for it, man. You know what I mean? Find find something you can work on that isn't the miniature that you're afraid of ruining. And, uh, and hash out your color scheme on that. Maybe even like a toy or something like that or whatever works for you. And, and go from there, man. Because then you can practice and muck it up or, you know, it's not the end of the world. Like I was saying, I think it's about 30 euros for five of these dudes. So do you really want to be mucking up like 30 of them? But I think my thing for me now is I have some of these so long and I've been sitting around so long without any paint on them that I'm just, I'm not afraid to throw paint on them at this stage, I think is what it is. Because I'm not as invested in 40k. So I'm not as anxious to make a mess of them. I'm just sort of... There's a certain amount of freedom you get when you don't give a shit about something after a while. And you're like, ah, oh, sure, fuck it, why not? That's that's pretty much what they're seeing here. That This is where our ah, oh, sure, fuck it gets you. Like, you know what I mean? Ah, <laughs> oh, sure, fuck You know, what's the worst that could happen? I'll ruin it. Be grand. Be grand. I mean, meta-wise, playing the game, if you're playing WYSIWYG and by the rules and, you know, you're doing everything by the meta, I have absolutely destroyed these Stone Boys if you go by the meta. Because they're easier to see from line of sight. I, I've actually made this unit way worse in-game by doing that. But I know that the mates that I play with will be grand they won't be like shit bags about it or i just won't care like i'm, I'm i'd never play in tournaments with these like this, I, I think this is part of the problem i have is that 
the state of 40k discourages cool conversions and cool interest in teams you know what i mean like obviously some people do stuff a bit over the top or whatever but like the likes of this this was these units now the way i'm doing them now would be an absolute nightmare in a tournament in regards to their arguing with people line of sight and uh, they would just get shut off the board like super easy whereas i'm going to be doing a league with me mates that are pretty sound so like i'll have fun you know what I mean? But if I was playing down in the local club with them, or if I was playing in the local games workshop with them, it, what I've actually done in, re in regards to a cool conversion is, is detrimental to the gameplay with them. Which just baffles me. You know? That just... I just find that weird. Like, your, your rule set is so restrictive that it discourages cool conversions. That's, that just seems very odd to me. Seems very counterintuitive. Especially because I joined years ago in the 90s and the hobby was more sort of... Right, well, my perception is that the hobby was more central, whereas sort of meta tournament gameplay seems to be central now and trumps all other aspects of the hobby, such as conversions and such. I just, I just find it's in a very odd place. You know, I could be wrong, but that's just... That's my opinion. That's that's the perception I have of it. I'd be interested to hear other people's opinions and perceptions and maybe where, where they think that I'm wrong or why I'm wrong, but that's what conversations for, and I'm more than happy to have it. We're down to the final two. If I can get this one, they're sticking the bleeding stir in. Get in your back. Haha. <laughs> Decent said he did the same with his thumb, boys. Good on you, man. Yeah, rule of cool. That's a, that's the, that's the thing that dictates my hobby now. Is rule of is it cool? Will it look awesome? Didn't do it, man. Is it detrimental to the gameplay if we stick by the rules and everything's WYSIWYG and the meta? It's like, yeah, I don't give a rats. The rules change that often. They just they don't matter anymore to me. They really don't. I'm interested about having fun with the miniatures that I bought and making them look cool. Because that's the thing, man. It's all about the eye candy. That's what drew you in when you first saw them, like, was the visual of it. You know, and what's more interesting than like the visual of Stormboys screaming towards you under plumes of smoke? It's gonna be sweet. Oh, 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 a bit liberal with the old wash there. Hold on, my left there. I'll have to tidy it up there now, Jesus. Jesus. I think I'm. I think I'm in awe or shock now. I think the problem is I'm not gonna be able to sleep. I'm like, I'm like, oh Jesus, we're on the roll. We're on the roll. We could, we could paint some green now. You know, it's like, no, no. And the other part of my brain is like, no, 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 no. We have to be up for work tomorrow. Be sensible. Be sensible. Put the miniatures down. Step away from the miniature. Put down the paintbrush. Slowly. <laughs> Right, and there we go. Whoa. Oh, God. Well, that was a heavy painting session. Jesus, how long are we going for? I don't even know how long we're streaming anymore. I'm just like, boop. What does... It says we are streaming... Doodly -doo, it's ten oh, three hours. Holy Jesus, three hours. Well, I hope you've had fun. We've, uh, we've gotten a fair chunk. We've gotten the camo. Uh, color sorted and the wash done next up on the chopping block will be doing the castellan green for the jetpack the helmet and the shoulder pads for them and their shoes that's what that's what i'm going to block off next and then that's 80 percent of the miniature done once that's done harness straps metal skin 
and then throw washes on those areas. And that's these guys pretty much tabletop, at least tabletop ready. We want to get them to about kind of this stage. This guy needs the metal put on, but otherwise it's not too bad. Um, we may not get the OSL done for the event, but I'd be happy with this. You know, throw metal on the guns, a metal on the axe, and a wash, and sure, just happy days. So there we go. Thanks for joining. If you've not subscribed already, subscribe, like, hit the old like button. Helps with the old algorithms. I hope you've all gotten plenty of progress done and you've had fun. I will be doing another stream tomorrow because I have more painting to be done. So thanks for joining. And I'll see you tomorrow. Good night.